What's up and welcome back to another live stream with Gizmo Slip Tech. Today we're unboxing the Alienware M16 with an RTX 4080 QHD 240Hz display i9-13900HX with four M.2 slots on the inside of this bad boy. Um, 16 gigs of RAM I believe and a one terabyte SSD. I can't wait to check it out, see what the inside is like to be able to house four M.2 SSDs and a 16 inch chassis, that's kind of insane. Um, we're gonna get started here in just a moment. I wanna make sure everything is good to go with the live stream and everything is working properly. And then we'll be good to I go. wanna make sure everything is good. Very nice, very nice. Uh, it, while we're getting started here, I would love it if you guys gave the live stream a, uh, a like. And if you wanna see more of my live streams, obviously subscribe for more, uh, subscribe and hit that notification bell as well. Now, uh, there it is. Okay, so I'm just gonna post this live stream over on the community tab so more people are aware of it as we go along here. We're gonna be doing a ton of different things with this laptop today. We're gonna take it out of the box, see what's inside the box. We're gonna take a look at the manuals. We're gonna take the bottom of the uh, chassis off if we can. It's gonna be an adventure, we're gonna test that out. We're gonna see if we can undervolt it. We're gonna do Cinebench R23. I don't know if we'll be able to undervolt it or not. Alienware may lock that down. We're gonna check out the new Alienware Command Center software that's supposed to be updated and upgraded and better than ever, supposedly. And uh, what else? So we're gonna do a display test. We're gonna do time spy test. And we're also gonna hop into Hogwarts and check out the performance in the latest and greatest Hogwarts Legacy game. Um, and we're, that way we're gonna also be able to kind of do a little comparison with the Asus Strix G18 in the stream, which I also did a live unboxing recently for. So what's up everybody? Don't be shy if you have comments or questions about the Alienware M16, we're gonna try to focus the chat around the M16 today. So let's get started, huh? All right. So first of all, We've got the Alienware logo right here with uh, one six, which is also on the, the, the top of the laptop lid. On the back, another Alienware logo. And it's kind of got this nice subtle printing on the outside of the box, which is a bit higher class than what some of the other manufacturers, I think it's better than the Strix box, at least on the outside. So let me get the other camera set up here so you can Get the full experience for the unboxing here. All right, gonna raise this up a little bit. Tilt it down. All right, now we gotta go here. Uh, Garov says, please compare 18 inch versus 16 inch size. We will do that, because we got the Strix G18 right over there. We can set them side by side and, and see what they're like. All right. Um, is this the one terabyte or smaller? It's a one terabyte, I believe. Okay. Here we go. Do, 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 do. All right, so on the right side, we have our laptop. On the left side, we have our power brick. Let's come down a little closer. All right, let's check out the power brick first. So the cable. Let's put that on the ground for now. And let's see how long this cable is. The old extendy test. All right, so it's about six, uh, six feet long or so, my full span. We got the Mama Jama the big 330 watt power brick with this guy, and it's a monster. It's the uh, the big one, the, the typical one. It's not a GAN power adapter that's, uh, you know, usually considered thinner and lighter. This one's gonna be your traditional power adapter. It's gonna be a bit heavier and beefier. Um, You can see the power the, the power adapter size difference here. It's it's pretty noticeable difference in size between the 330 watt from Alienware and the uh, 
the 330 watt from Asus this year. I I really got to say that the Asus one's definitely going to be more compact and a little bit lighter, though it's about the same weight. I wouldn't say the weight is really where it's at. I don't think that that should probably make a huge difference in your decision making factor on which laptop you buy, but it does should weigh have a little factor, you know. Um, What are the difference between this one and the 18 except the screen size? Uh, display options are different between the Alienware M16 and the Alienware M18. Um, the pricing is gonna be different because the Alienware M18 is likely going to be more expensive. The, what else? There might be, I think there's a, a few more, a couple more ports on the 18 inch. I'd have to do a little more detailed breakdown, but we can we can dive into that um, a little later. So we've got this plastic. It doesn't want to come up right away. I got to try to figure out how to. I don't want to rip the plastic if I can. Oh, you got to do these ones first. I think I'm just gonna slide it out the side. Yeah, there we go. Nice. All right. Beautiful. There's the laptop. It's very, it's, it's honestly, it's a bit thinner than I thought. Can you guys see that? Okay. Let me move one of my lights so you can see the side of this. I mean, we'll get more shots of it in a moment anyway. That's fine. But it's a bit thinner and small, lighter than I thought it was going to be. Still feels hefty. Like you could kill a zombie with this thing, like ka-cha. Um, yeah, cool. All right, so quick examination of the stickers. We got some Alienware stickers, which are pretty cool. And I'm just gonna put this right here for now. All right, so we got some Alienware stickers. Can you guys see that okay? Pretty cool, actually. They look like high quality stickers. Alienware M16R1 is the name of this laptop. Got a webcam and microphone at the top of the display. Power button is on the right side. On the back, we have our two Thunderbolt 4s, our Ethernet, USB-A, headset port on the left side. Yeah. Full-size SD card slot, display port, power adapter port. Looking pretty sweet. There's the manual, warranty and regulatory information. I don't think you're gonna really be able to read this, but for your reading pleasure, if you really want to look at it. I think the, the most interesting parts of the warranty agreement is usually, for me, whether it's transferable to someone else and how long it lasts. Because some manufacturers offer two years, some offer only one. Most of them offer only one. And some offer even accidental protection, depending on where you buy it. So, Chris G, are we gonna compare this versus the G18? Yeah, we're gonna compare this against the G18 um, as we go along. And I'm gonna show it side by side with the G18. Okay, so, I'm trying to find where it says how many years this is going to be, but I'm not seeing it. Well, I'm not sure. Okay, so here's another uh, Alienware card. It has a little statement about 1996. We built out, set out to build the most innovative and high-performance computers for ourselves and our fellow gamers, and it's got more there. You can pause it if you want to read it. But, yep, so that's the stuff on the inside of the box. I think that's everything that's in the box. Very nice, let's go ahead and, I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. Nice, okay, so there is no, there is no, um, felt cover on the keyboard or anything. So I was gonna take that off and put that in the box if 
if it was there, but it, there's not one. So I'm gonna go ahead and close the box up and put it away now. All right. So, what do you guys want to see first? Where's the part on that card where they sold the souls to Dell? What? Yeah, I thought you were gonna say sold their souls to the devil, and then you said Dell, and I was like, wait, that makes sense too. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, I, I really don't think the alien were sold their souls to the devil or to Dell, but LOL. Um, okay. Here we are. Let's go ahead and get this thing plugged in. This is definitely a very beefy power adapter brick. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Before we do that, let's actually go ahead and take this bad boy off. Uh, the bottom off of this bad boy. All right. That'll be step one. Every video, every unboxing. Okay. I like the keyboard, feels good. This feels like a really high quality build from Alienware this year. Feels It feels like a, a, a slight step up from the G18 because of this uh, metal top lid and metal bottom. That definitely gives it a more premium feel. It still has a kind of a plasticky feel, um, like a rubberized. I don't know if it's plastic or not, but it's kind of a rubberized feel when you in the inside of the laptop, which does feel good to the hands, you know. All right, so I'm gonna get the screwdriver out. There's a link in the description down below if you want to get the same iFixit toolkit that I have here. Do do do. Is that a built-in laptop stand in the bottom? Kind of. So you guys, you guys can probably see this, right? Let me go and make sure it's in focus. Um, we've got this ring of rubber all the way around. That gives it some nice separation from your desk surface. Um, should help improve the airflow in the chassis, which is very important for thermals. How much for this one? It's in the uh, video thumbnail, it's $25.99 from Best Buy. And there's a link in the description to, to picking it up or you can go on my laptop list and check it out there. It's interesting, I think these are pop-up screws in the corners here. Alienware's been doing pop-up screws too sometimes. Um, let me go ahead and flip this around. Also, into the AM, if you guys are interested in some shirts, there's a link in the description with a discount code for the into the AM shirts that I wear in my live streams sometimes. So go check them out. It does help support me as a creator if you do end up using them. Uh, and yeah, it looks like both of the screws in the left and right sides are pop-up screws. So we've got separation of the chassis from the bottom right here and also right here. So you can use either side to get the start of the, the chassis being popped off. Now the question is, will this beat the G18 you reviewed the other day? That is the question. Um, and I can tell you for build quality, <clears throat> I already give the Alienware M16 like an extra few points because this is more solidly built than the the G18 because it's got this metal bottom and metal top so it's, it, it's an entire metal enclosure except the rear looks like it's plastic this rear butt end is plastic but having the rear butt end be plastic is probably really good for thermals because then this is going to be the hottest part of the laptop because this is where all the exhausts are well, not all the exhausts, there's huge exhausts on the sides too, but um, the fact that 
that there's uh, a lot of the the biggest exhaust is usually coming out the back. So this helps, this should help our thermal situation not getting too hot. Um, you know, transferring the, because a lot of metal chassis have the heat transfer throughout the whole chassis. And the whole chassis with a metal chassis eventually becomes a heat sink, which is not great, right? So, but I don't think we're going to have that problem as much with this, this laptop, so. I really, I really like what Alienware did with the, uh, the chassis design so far with my hands on. It feels extremely rigid. And the bottom is that the bottom, since there's two pop-up screws, it's definitely going to be easier to remove than most laptop bottoms too. And Alienware is clearly expecting people to do custom upgrades because they included four M.2 slots in this thing. So, all right, can we get this thing off now? We can, there it is. Okay, so let's go ahead and put this guy back down into the light and get everything situated here. All right, so for 23.39 with a coupon at Dell. So, um, you might be able to get it for a discount with Dell. Unfortunately, if you end up using the coupons, um, sometimes that doesn't, that basically cuts away any support for me as a creator. That's the only downside to using the coupons like Honey and some other stuff. So, but that's okay if you guys end up doing that. I totally understand that you'd rather save some money. So, anyway, <clears throat> are you guys ready for the big reveal? Here we go. Three, two, one. Woo, okay. So, how did they do this? Oh, I see. Okay, so we have two 2280 SSDs on the right side. On the left side, we have two 2230s. All right? So that means that you're not going to be able to do four full-size M.2 SSDs with this machine. That is kind of a bummer because the 2230s have much smaller uh, SSD sizes, and I believe they're usually more expensive. So you only get two full-size SSDs, basically. And you can do a 2230 here as well. There is a screw to switch it over to the 2230 size. Uh, but that's, that's too bad, in my opinion. That's too bad. That's a little disappointing, I'm not gonna lie. But, it's still cool that there's four slots. You could still get some cheaper upgrades, like throwing an extra one terabyte SSDs into each of these or something, or I think they go up to two terabytes at their largest. Uh, at least that's what it used to be, I'm not sure now. Okay, so taking a look at the RAM here, we've got, DDR5 4800, SK Hynix uh, RAM. I'll go ahead and zoom in on that here in a moment. But uh, let's take a look at the thermal solution real quick. So as best we can, at least. We've got one fan here, two fan here, third fan here. So we've got a three fan design with this third fan only going out the side. And I believe that is the mouse side as well. So that's not great if you like using mouse on the right hand side, okay? Um, let me go ahead and unplug this battery and I'll try to pop the RAM out. Okay, so our battery is now disconnected. Let's go ahead and take a look at this RAM up close. Gizmo, what's the best RTX 4090 laptop? Uh, so far, the two highest performance uh, 4090 laptops, the MSI GT77 and the XMG Neo 17 
Both of those I've seen have Cinebench or Time Spy scores over 23,000. And so basically, I think both of those laptops are being overclocked above 175 watts um, by the manufacturers against NVIDIA's wishes, probably. I don't know. That's, NVIDIA's trying to lock it down to 175, but those laptop makers are like, we know that the laptop can go higher performance, so they want to push it because they know that users want the performance out of it. Um, I'm not sure the best way to measure that. Maybe using an external power reading. Okay, so tool, that might be the best way to measure it and comparing. Because I'm curious what the true wattage is on those laptops, but they're, I, I really don't think that they're only 175 watts. Okay, so can you guys see this RAM? That's the RAM. So it's eight gig, one RX 16 PC5, 4800B. SCO 1010XT RAM. All right. This is our Wi-Fi. I'm not gonna take the covers off of these. Oh, there's another fan here. There's actually a fourth fan that I didn't notice. It's like a small little guy. Let me pull back out or let me, I'll kind of zoom in on it here. So you guys see that there's a fourth fan here. It's a little, it's a little guy. It's not very big, but it looks like it's just generally designed to move air through the chassis. Would you recommend the MSI Raider instead of the Titan? I'm confused with the almost thousand dollars extra is coming from. Um, the thousand dollars extra is coming from bigger SSDs, more RAM, a better screen, and a, a more extensive cooling solution in the GT77. All of those things cost extra money. So, um, but uh, yeah, if I were to buy a GT77 or a GE78, I think I would go GT78, just because I need something a little more portable. If you don't need the extra portability, then I think the GT77 makes more sense. If you're gonna spend that much, might as well get the best. But if I was buying a GT77, I also would only get the, uh, okay, the battery is now plugged back in. I would only get the, the 46, nine, or $45.99 variant of the RTX 4090. I wouldn't get the 5299 128 gig version because it comes with slower RAM. And I don't need 128 gigs of RAM anyway. I only need 64. So, all right. So that's the internals. Uh, this is a vapor chamber cooling system on the RTX 4080 and 4090 uh, for the GPU and CPU, and it does have Element 31 liquid metal, but it is an inverted motherboard, it looks like. So if you need to repaste this guy, you're gonna need to uh, take this thing completely apart. That's kind of a big downside uh, if you ever do need to repaste it. Now, I don't think you will, as long as the application initially is good, you probably won't need to repaste it for at least probably 10 plus years. Um, let me go ahead and zoom back out again so you can see the whole thing. So on the left side, right here, we have our speaker, down firing speakers. I believe there are also up firing speakers on the top. And just to recap everything, we have our 86 watt hour battery right here. It's a large guy though, must be very thin. Um, looks like it's user replaceable. You just got screws here, that's nice. So you got four SSD slots, uh, two 2230s and then two 2280 slots here. Wi-Fi here, one fan on the, this is actually the left side when you flip it back around, but it's on the right side of now. Then we have a middle fan and then we have two fans over here on the left side. And uh, both of these are gonna go out the side exhaust and rear exhaust, oh, this one goes out the rear as well. So. Air is gonna move very interestingly through this chassis. And I think this fan is very interesting because it should really help keep the center of the chassis much cooler than your typical metal chassis. Like, um, cause that that's one of the biggest issues right now, I think with metal chassis in general, they just end up tending to get really hot overall. So you see companies like Razer and now Alienware also adding this middle fan and, and Asus also adding the middle fan to just move air out the chassis and help with overall thermals. So it is a very small fan though. I wonder how big of a difference it'll actually make. 
Now, when you're putting this thing back together, you'll want to make sure these little latches along this edge go in to the back first. And then you press down and you're going to want to do the pop-up screws as well. Okay, so that's in there correctly. Does the mini LED on the G14 look good in person or was the improvement from the 22, 22 version not that noticeable? So the screen looks good, but it didn't look as good as like the SCAR 16 mini LED. And that's because the G14's mini LED display only goes up to 600 nits brightness uh, at its peak with a 500, uh, 500 nits base, where the SCAR goes up to 1100 nits brightness as its peak and 600 watt, uh, nits brightness at its base. So the G14 is just gonna be a lot, a lot brighter. Uh, sorry, I mean the SCAR 16 is gonna be a lot brighter. And, the, and so on the G14, I would probably actually go for just the standard Nebula display and then get the anime matrix in the back because you only lose 100 nits of total brightness for the G14. Okay, so time to pop this guy back together again, which it's a lot easier if I hold the laptop in my lap instead of... So in general, I try to get the initial pops just getting started and then I'll do the pop-up screws. And, uh, cause you really need, these pop-up screws are gonna fight you as you're trying to pop it back together. And if you just screw them in, right away at the beginning, that'll get the chassis actually started to being popped in anyway, so. So get those pop-up screws in. Now you get it. All of that's popped in. Popped in. Okay, so it's all back together again. As far as I can tell. Beautiful. All right. Uh, let's put the screws back in, of course. Totally didn't not forget to put the screws back in. <laughs> okay. Uh, looks like we've got a super chat from Jordan. Thank you very much, Jordan. It really helps um, support me as a creator. Um, Jordan says, in the market, buying your videos have been amazing. Thanks, dude, for your nice comment. That's really generous and kind of you to say. Uh, Anthony Martinez says, when I took a mine apart, it honestly did not feel like metal compared to the X14. That was metal. Interesting. Like, no, this, this, this feels like metal to me. It's got like a cold, it's cold to the touch where plastic, you know, doesn't get cold to the touch. So it's definitely conducting heat like a metal object would. But thank you so much, Anthony, for the, uh, for the, for the support as well, the $5, both you guys. When will you get the 2023 G14? Uh, that's not for up for sale yet, as far as I'm aware. If it is up for sale, let me know and I'll try to order one. But I'm gonna try to get that in as soon as I can. That's definitely a high demand laptop that I wanna do as quickly as possible. Do, do, do. Okay, so now we're ready to get this thing plugged in and start testing it out. Um, but maybe now would be a good time to show the comparison side by side with the Strix G14 too. So let me go ahead and do that before we plug everything in and it gets all hot. All right. So there we are. So the, uh, the width is the only thing that's wider. The depth is almost identical between these two laptops. But the, the width right here, that's it. You know, Alienware has been known to be quite, um, quite large, especially deep, because they always have this extra back area that gives them a lot of ports and exhaust. So it makes sense that they're just as deep, but just wider on the 18 inch. So I like the Asus's design in terms of portability, especially for us 18 inch chassis overall. It's definitely a lot more impressive in my opinion. Let's zoom in so you guys get a little better view of it, but it's, uh, it's 
quite impressive. Honestly, they're, they're both, I, I really like both of them, honestly. So the biggest difference between these two is the ports and the fact that you have the ports on the back for the G uh, or the M, the M14. You see that okay? So the thickness, the M16 is definitely thinner is what I would say. My feedback is that the M16 is, is clearly like a noticeable, noticeably thinner machine. So the M16 really only like kind of looks thicker because of that rubber foot that's underneath it. But when you don't factor in that rubber foot, it's not as big of a difference. Uh, Real Logic with the $2 Canadian donation. That's very nice. Um, thank you very much for the support. The question is, did Asus say if the G18 supported higher speed RAM? Asus said it does not support higher speed RAM. Confirmed yet, but they're actually looking into adding support for user upgradable RAM to 5600. So um, they didn't confirm 100% that it's going to come, but it seems likely because it's basically, I think it's adding in more BIOS options because the motherboard should support the increased RAM speed. Anthony Martinez with the $20 super chat. Thanks so much, man. I appreciate these. this. Um, that does help support me as creator. Again, I know these things are expensive and I know the community is very happy and how in depth you are being with this new M16. Thank you. Yeah, I'm just, I'm, my goal as a creator is to be literally as helpful as possible to people. So, and I have bought hundreds, you know, not hundreds, I've bought probably, I've probably bought close to 100 laptops now. Um, and it sometimes can be very hard to find reliable, good info, you know, comparing different laptops. And that's, that's what I'm trying to provide for people. So you can do easy comparison shopping. And that's a big focus of my sheet and my channel in general, just trying to be as helpful as possible. So thank you so much for the $20 super chat. Um, okay. Are we ready? Let's zoom out. The keyboard backlight is gorgeous. This is a high quality keyboard backlight. It's better quality for sure than the Strix G18's keyboard backlight. Like this, this is like equal to the highest tier keyboard backlight for sure. Okay, let's try to uh, turn it on. Cause I actually never pressed the power button but these lights came on, which is interesting. So I pressed the power button once but maybe it was already starting. I don't know, that was a little weird. Let's try pressing it again. All right, so now maybe it's turning on. Notice the power button is an RGB multicolor power button. Um, I'll go ahead and give you guys a little close up of this keyboard so you can get a better idea of its quality and the, the brightness. So this was flashing different colors a moment ago. Right now it's just solid blue. Looks very bright on the camera though. But you notice how the, the keys here, all the FN, F1, F2, F12, all these key functions are lit up and all the secondary key functions are also lit up, which not all backlight keyboards do that. So that's really nice that the M16 does that. You can see the, the layout here. It's got decent spacing. All the keys are a reasonable size. We've got uh, on the right side, We've got our uh, volume, up and down, mute, and mic mute. Let's see if I can get this thing to focus for me. All right, so on the right side, we have our volume, up and down, mute, and uh, microphone mute, a delete button, an end button, and a home button. So the delete, the home and end buttons here are here at the top. Page up and downs are integrated into the full size arrow keys, which is, a, a bit different. Um, this keyboard feels fantastic. It, it, the keyboard is really, really great, guys. It's got a good feel. I don't think this is, I don't think this is the Cherry MX keyboard unless it's a silent one, because it doesn't, it's not a very loud and clicky keyboard, so. The actual texture of the keys are slightly rubberized, it feels like. like 
It's like the uh, not quite as rubbery feeling as this, the keyboard deck. This is like a, a, a very rubbery overall feel, but the keys are a little bit more plasticky, but a, still a slight rubbery texture. I think they're just plastic keys though, but with like a, some kind of coating on them. Can we talk about that VCR sized power brick and no USB-C power delivery support? Interesting. Okay, so uh, the Alienware screen finally turned on and uh, here we go. Anthony Martinez with another $20 super chat, by the way. Thank you so much, Anthony. You are rolling in the money. Um, <laughs> okay, I am personally not always getting, <laughs> sorry. I don't know, maybe you're not rolling in the money and this is really hard for you to donate. Either way, the donations are appreciated. Uh, I am personally not always gaming and a power delivery option would have been great for when using it in simple documents and simple browsing, I believe. Yeah, especially given the size of that power brick, it'd be really nice to have the option of power delivery. Wow, the screen was not as bright as I, uh, wow. Okay, so when I moved the mouse, the screen got brighter. It said no power, uh, no time of day set. So it wasn't loading past the BIOS. I just hit continue. I don't know, maybe that's a little weird that it's not set already or whatever, but. Is the RX 7800 XT worth it? Are you talking about like a laptop version of that? Uh, it might be worth it, but I don't know that it'll be worth the, the weight because so far AMD has not announced a 7800 XT. They've only announced the 7700 like S or something like that. So uh, their highest end models, they've not announced yet. I think they're still working on them, I guess. But uh, either way, any, any AMD next gen GPUs are gonna be at the end of Q2 slash start of Q3, I believe this year. So like talking like June timeframe, probably at the soonest. And um, yeah, okay. So initial display impressions are good. There is a very bright, vibrant display. And I'm very curious to test it out with my display checker because the display is probably the biggest drawback to this machine. And if the display is actually better than, than anticipated, let's say this is a 500 nits display and Alienware just didn't label it correctly on their website, that makes this machine so much more competitive with, uh, with the G18. Okay. Getting connected to Wi Fi. Can you test the Asus ROG G18 next? I already did that in a previous. Um, I already did that in the previous live stream. So go check out my previous live streams that I did the last couple days. If you wanna check out the Strix G18. Anthony Martinez, when you changed the RAM heads up for whatever reason, my M16 hung for almost 10 minutes before it actually booted. It was pretty heart stopping. Interesting. Well, I'm not gonna be changing the RAM in this, but that's good for people to know since you've already done that. Um, Luffy says, do you think the Strix Scar 18 not being mini LED is a game breaker? No, I don't because the display the SCAR 18 has is incredible. It's already so bright and vibrant. It's gonna be so hard to not be happy with it, in my opinion. Um, all right, chat, what are we gonna name this Alienware M18? Looking for Goofy. Let's see, let's see some suggestions. Um, hmm. We, uh, for the Strix G18, we had Strix mix Strix face, but it was too long, so we had to go some go another round. We uh, route we'd ended up with Thunder thighs for the Alienware M18, so uh, Tupperware, the Wallet Breaker. <laughs> um, hmm. 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 Still waiting for uh, some better suggestions, y'all. Come on, we can do better than this. Do wallet breaker.
Gary. Argo. Okay. Come on, chat. We can do better than this. What's something that we can do with Alienware name, maybe? Um, not an alien. Hmm. Hmm. Come on. We can do better than that still. I think, I think we can do better than that. Let's see here. Uh, how about... Where's your alien instead of alien where? Well, no, I don't know. <laughs> Getting the M18. Yes, I did order an Alienware M18. The alienator. We're going to go with that. That's good enough. I like it. I, I have uh, the alienator. We're going we're gonna to do that one. All right. Drippy wear. All right, so we're uh, still going through some Windows setup here. It's uh, starting up and I believe rebooting, configuring Windows and everything. Um, shall we go over the ports for a moment? Okay. On the right side, nothing. All just uh, fan exhausts. There's only fan exhausts. And I believe this is a speaker grill right here. On the left side, we have our headset port, USB-A, and then we have a two and a half gigabit ethernet port right here. On the back, power adapter port. Full-size SD card slot, mini display port, HDMI 2.1, USB-A, and two Thunderbolt uh, 4 ports right here. So I really love the ports on this machine. I kind of wish there was three USB-As, but the fact that they have two USB or Thunderbolt 4s kind of makes up for it. And the fact that they have everything, including a full-size SD card reader and a mini display port is just, it's really, really fantastic. Uh, the M18, I believe, has one more USB-A, uh, if I remember correctly. So um, the M18 has slightly better ports. All right, so we gotta go ahead and sign into Windows. All right, we're getting signed in. Okay, checking out chat. One really weird port to place, I believe you mean a really weird place to put the uh, ethernet. Yeah, I agree. I usually would say ethernet belongs on the back if they do add an ethernet port. Um, especially since there's already so many ports there. Okay, uh, we are ready to do Windows Hello. Ooh, are you ready to set up your Windows Hello for faster sign-in and more security? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, that's it, you're all set. Okay, so we'll see how well Windows Hello works as we get, uh, get going. So I gotta create a pin here. No number pad on this, so it's uh, a little less convenient when you're logging in. And having a number pad is, is nicer if you don't have Windows Hello because you can just quickly like do your little number pad um, pin and you're good to go. Uh, so we're coming back over here again. Uh, let me go ahead and zoom in on the display a little more. So I always turn off these privacy settings unless there's a specific reason like you're using their mapping software or something, but basically I don't want Windows, you know, using my information for, um, let's see here, can I just hit next? <laughs> I don't have to say I read <laughs> their privacy statement, which is interesting. Um, 
Let's continue on. We'll decline, decline. If I was buying this laptop, I'd probably accept those free offers, at least for now. But especially with Game Pass, you can play some games, sweet games for free for at least a little while. So initial impressions of this display is that it's more than 350 nits. It, it feels brighter than that. It feels 400 or higher, I think. Uh, we'll have to do the display test because that's one of the biggest questions about this laptop. How bright is the display? Um, JT Wizzle says, Ethernet and SD card locations need to be swapped. I agree. That would be a smarter move on the design, but they maybe had a reason for switching it like that. Um, cause yeah, usually when you're swapping in an SD card quickly, you're, you don't want to stand up and look behind the machine to put it in. Right. But an ethernet, you only need to plug that in once when you get the laptop set up. So it's okay to have it in the back. It's better to have it in the back, I think. And it's out of the way then. It's not a visual eyesore, you know, if it's on the side, then it, you can see it all the time. But a lot of laptops have it on the side still. It's just if it's optional, I like to have, put it on the back. All right, Daryl says, what's the difference between a PC and laptop graphics card? Thanks. Good question, Daryl. Uh, this is something I talk about a, a lot on my channel and in my reviews. The laptop version of the RTX 4080 is not the same thing as the desktop 4080. It is uh, significantly lower wattage. And in the case of the 4080 de desktop and laptop, there's a different CUDA cores, different uh, like total VRAM. There's a different... Um, total wattage, all of those things can significantly impact performance. Now, an RTX 4090 has the same CUDA cores as a RTX 4080 desktop. So an RTX 4090 laptop is the same as a 4080 desktop. So that gives you some reference there, but it's with a lower voltage RAM and more power efficient, lower overall wattage. So the um, definitely don't expect full desktop performance with these new laptop GPUs. Uh, for the equivalent name, but it's shockingly high performance on these new laptop. So uh, these new laptops, laptop GPUs are shockingly good, uh, in my opinion. They're better, th much better than I anticipated. I was anticipating more like a 20 to 30% bump in performance, and we're getting more like a 40 to 60% bump in performance, depending on the resolution you're getting. Um, at least from a generation tier to generation tier jump. Like this is the second best laptop GPU this year in this laptop, and um, the second best from last generation, the 3070 Ti, is the one I would compare against this GPU. So we're talking 40 to 60% bump from that GPU, so. All right, so we are in Windows. Let's pop over to Alienware Control Center and check that out first, and then let's do a display test. That'll be our next second thing. Cause this, this display is the biggest question mark for a lot of people, I think. So, all right. So getting my mouse switched over from my Legion over to here. We are going to try to skip this. Hit remind me later. All right. so. My Alienware, this is your one-stop shop for everything related to your Alienware. Get started learning about your device and engaging with the community. Oh man, this is not just a software to control your Alienware, it's also your next social media platform experience. <laughs> okay, um, let's start with exploring the device. System health, Alienware system manuals. So you have your Alienware system manual here? Overclocking. Interesting. So they have bits on overclock. Let's zoom in on it. Make sure you guys can read this okay. Uh, overclocking is a way to custom tune your computer or adjust the power, voltage, core, memory settings, and other key values for ultimate performance. I wonder if they're supporting overclocking, for example, with like Intel, Intel XTU and undervolting. That would be super interesting if we can adjust that. Um, for Alienware M15 and M17 systems, it's showing, so it's not even this laptop. Oh boy, that's not great. So, yeah. These Alienware systems aren't even, this, this manual is not even for this laptop. It needs to be updated. So hopefully Alienware gets on top of that. That's not good in my opinion. Don't want people reading about the wrong stuff, you know? 
All right, uh, how do I get to actually adjusting this thing? Where do I go? This is not intuitive, Alienware, what is this? Explore, where? <laughs> if I can't figure out how to adjust the power profiles, where do you go here? All right, is there another like, is this not the command center? Is this just like an infotainment thing? Alienware command center, is this a new application? Okay, I don't think that was even the command center. It didn't have a name in the top left and it looked like it was the command center, but I don't think it was. It's just kind of like a welcome to your Alienware laptop screen. And I kind of wish it wouldn't show up. Uh, technical Technicolor Tube says that's not the command center, man. Thanks for thanks for making it clear now that I already figured it out. <laughs> the Alienware Command Center grid box is there. So I mean that's that's my fault. That's not that's not Alienware's fault. I should have I should have recognized. Okay, so this command center. Let's see our home. This all looks exactly the same as the previous Alienware Command Center. I wonder why it's not interesting. Nothing here looks any different. Do we need to update this? UI is bad, wouldn't blame you. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I gotta grab, I'm gonna do the display test next here. So let me grab the drivers. They fell down under the table. Wedja. Okay. All right. I really need to get a, uh, USB-C to USB-C cable because these laptops that only have two USB-A's now I don't have a third USB-A slot to be able to plug in the next item like my display it's not detecting my drive yet let's see here taking a little while to pop up hmm Real Logic says that's the exact same command center I have on my X17 R2. Yeah, it'll probably auto update this automatically <laughs> if it works. I've had such problems auto updating Alienware Command Center. Um, Let me try unplugging this and plugging it back in. I mean, it's it's bedinging, like it's being detected, but it's not actually popping up with the drive. My drive did just fall off the table. I hope it's okay. Ah, there we go. My SSD inside my external drive had popped out of socket. Probably in its fall, so. Now I could probably un unplug this and plug it back in. There we go. And now will it show up? I'm seeing it. Okay, there we go. All right. Um, So we're gonna get Steam, we're gonna grab a Cinebench, we're gonna grab the Spider 5 Elite. We're waiting. There we go, and HW Info, Afterburner, don't do that. All right, and we need Cinebench R23. All right, we're gonna start with these programs. Um, and we also need to get 
Did I grab the spider five elite? We'll see. Vicky says three battery cycles and a new laptop is normal. I'm confused about your question, Vicky. Uh, what are you asking specifically about the three battery cycles? Uh, Fatulation. It won't appear. Check the disk management and probably assign a letter to the drive. Um, so usually it does appear automatically with Windows. Fatulation. And it did. It just like my drive was just unplugged from the because this is an external SSD enclosure. And it fell off the table a moment ago, and that's why it didn't didn't come up. Now I'm hoping, <laughs> I'm really hoping I didn't damage anything here, because it just fell. Can I run this now? Three battery cycles in a new laptop is it normal? Battery cycles count in the battery report from Windows. Got you. Um, I would guess that the manufacturer probably does do some testing on each machine to make sure it's all working how it's supposed to. So I wouldn't worry about three battery cycles. That's not a big deal, I don't think. Do, do, do. Okay, so next we have um, got to grab the Spider Five real quick. Where did I put it? There it is. Okay. So many drawers in my desk. I can't keep track of where everything is in the desk. It's kind of crazy. All right. Uh, Foxhound says, "Hi, my friend. I know this is unrelated." But I'm awaiting my Aura 17X to ship. Has the laptop even technically released yet? Yes, on February 8th, the Aura 17X officially launched or was released. Um, my order hasn't moved on Newegg and thought they launched on the 8th. So I had, uh, I ordered six different laptops and only the laptops from Best Buy actually shipped to me. Because Best Buy is much better, I think, in general about only listing for sale laptops that they have on hand and are actually capable of shipping out. Some some laptop manufacturers out there like um, B&H Photo and notice how I said that was a, with a little bit of disdain. Uh, but B&H Photo, it, it's a legitimate website. They just sometimes will list laptops for sale that they don't really have in their stock, you know? So... Basically, I'm guessing what happens is BNH Photo lists, hey, hey, we're selling the Aura 17X. And then Gigabyte says, cool, we'll send you 20 of them. And BH Photo takes 100 orders for them. And then now they can only ship 20 of them out. And so then everyone's left, you know, waiting for their laptop for so long. Um, and that's the way it is. That's That's the business right now. It's kind of silly, but... All right. So Cinematch R23. I think that's all the things we want to test today. We're going to do Steam install for Time Spy, Cinematch R23, HW Info. Um, I kind of want to download. Let's go to updates. Interesting. Alienware update. Is this a different? Okay, that didn't, came up with a weird. I'm trying to get to Windows update. I'm sure we're gonna have some, some updates. Uh, Sandor M with the $5 super chat donation. Thank you so much, man. Um, hi, thanks for the info and for doing, or thanks for doing these kinds of tests. I, I can, I wait for Lenovo. So I'm guessing you mean you're really excited about the Lenovo Pro 7i. Yeah, I'm very excited about it too. Um, I think it's going to be really, really great. Um, at least the raw performance and the price to performance for the, the Pro 7i looks to be one of the best for this year, especially in any 4090 based device. So how much is the Stealth 14? It's going to depend on the configuration. It's gonna start, I think, uh, the configurations I saw was starting around $1,500. 
um, give or take a hundred or something dollars. But the Stealth 14 looks actually pretty promising this year, but I don't know that it'll be better than the Zephyrus G14. The build quality seemed better on the Stealth 14. Like it's, it felt like a better built device. Um, but the performance on the G14 seems to be engineered better based on my impressions and the capabilities that the manufacturers have rated the laptops for. So, all right. Um, did Alienware Command Center show any updates in the Microsoft Store? Good question. So we can test the display while things are updating in the background. Um, let's go Microsoft Store. Because I know that Alienware Command Center can be updated from the Microsoft Store. That's kind of how Alienware was having it done. I'm just going to search Alienware and see what comes up. I'm wondering if this is so early that they just haven't updated the Alienware Command Center yet. I don't know. Let's go into... It's time to go Google. I don't want to bang it. I want to Google it. <laughs> uh, let's go to Google. All right, and we're gonna go Alienware M16 4080 uh, Command Center. All right, so here's the here's the place where you could buy this right now. I'm curious. Let's go instead, go to uh, drivers. Can we get the drivers section to just pop up here? Otherwise we're gonna need to go to drivers and downloads or maybe, maybe there's a place on this page under support, get started, drivers and downloads. I want to find it manually. Alienware Command Center, updated February 8th. Perfect. We'll want to do the full installer, I believe. It's downloading. This this Alienware Command Center, can you see this? It is crazy. It is 1.1 gigs. What? What? I can't believe it's 1.1 gigs for a, a, just a utility. That is nuts to me. Um, okay, wow. <laughs> but we definitely want to get that updated and check that out, so. Congratulation says there's a BIOS update in there as well. Yeah, that's a good idea to grab that. Uh weird I guess it wasn't done copying for some reason I thought it was done several minutes ago interesting this is going so slowly It's fatal, fa fatal Yushin. Fa what? I'm just gonna call you fatal, okay? At least I didn't call you fetal Yushin, okay? That's a step up. <laughs> uh, I hope you don't mind me messing up your name every now and then. I'm, I'm just trying as best I can here. All right, uh, oops, we need to go. We're just going to, we might have to recopy Cinebench, basically. There we go. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and switch the camera. I got to log in to um, do the old code for the spider. All right.
Let's see if that's correct. Cool, it is. All right, so we've got it installed now. Let's go ahead and see how bright this thing is. I'm really curious. This is gonna be like probably the, I don't know if it's the number one factor and whether I'll recommend it. Obviously the performance is the number one factor, but I'm not that worried about the performance sucking. I'm more worried about this, so. All right, we're gonna do our gamut and our brightness tests. There we go. All right, so we're gonna lay the screen back. Set that sensor just right. It needs to be flush with the display for it, because it's got a little rubber edging around it. Yeah, the display is set to maximum brightness. That is very red. It looks more orangish on the stream, but that is extremely red. Obviously, a, a very vibrant display here I've got in front of me now. Like the colors, every time it switches, it's just like a punch in the face, like visually to the eye. It's so like strong. Okay, all right, so... Troll Lord says, oh man, I'm late. I subscribed, but didn't get notification. You got to hit that notification bell. Otherwise you're going to miss the live stream. All right. So we're ready for our brightness test. So we need to set our brightness all the way down to zero. And brightness is set to zero. Now we're going to make sure that we're set in the right in the spot. It's going to measure this. So this test measures the brightness and the contrast at different levels of, of uh, brightness setting. All right, so we're gonna go up to 25% now. Um, we just have to do it to 20%. We gotta do the best we can, but. Chloe Baddock says, I so want a mini LED to screen. screen. Yeah, like, don't get me wrong. I'm, these dis this display is gonna be good. But a mini LED is going to be better, without a doubt. Scar has more RGB and a better audio transparent. I think you mean compared to G series. Yeah, that's true. The speakers should be upgraded on the, the Scar versus Strix G series. And uh, all right, so we're at seventy five brightness, seventy five percent brightness now. GT77HX is not available in Canada. That is disappointing. I want to make a note that I can adjust the display brightness without having to do FN plus that. So if you press the FN button, it actually makes it do, you know, like the F9 key or whatever instead of the brightness. So now we're at 100% brightness on the display. Just doing the measurement here. And then I think we'll get our results. All right. So we got, uh, for our results, we got 100% sRGB. And I want to make a note here that uh, my calibrator here, I don't think is perfectly accurate. So I, I believe that uh, it's, from what I've tested, it's about 10% high when measuring Adobe RGB and the P3 color gamut. So this says, I'll zoom in on the results here so you can see them a little easier. Uh, it says 100% sRGB, 91% Adobe RGB, and 90% of the P3 color gamut. All right. Um, so it's probably accurate that it's 100% DCI P3 color gamut. And our brightness. It is only 342 nits. It's not a 500 nits display. It's not, okay? So it gets down to 17 nits at the lowest end with the highest contrast ratio. The brightness gets up to 342 nits, which is still a very bright display when indoors, but it's not like ultra bright, like blindingly bright, you know? Um, like I've used 350 nits displays for a long time and very been very happy with them. 
but it's just not quite as awesome as a 500 nit plus for sure. So definitely a drawback here, but at least it's a colorful display and it has decent contrast ratio as well. All right, I believe our download is complete. Let's open the installer here. And let's hope everything installs correctly. Uh, Salem says, hi, any info about which laptops we can expect next? So next, the next live unboxing will probably be the XMG Neo 17. Unless I get the Blade 16 or 18 in yet uh, early, then I'll probably prioritize that one. But um, the XMG Neo 17 is just a pre-production unit, so I can't do full tests on it anyway. So I'm just not prioritizing that one as much yet. But uh, I do have the liquid cooler with that unit. And so it should be able to basically be equal to the most powerful gaming laptop visually uh, for, from a GPU perspective. Uh, so yeah, so next is either gonna be the XMG Neo 16, or sorry, the XMG Neo 17 or the Blade 16 or 18. Um, and then we're gonna continue doing our benchmarks with the Strix G18. Um, I want to just do a ton of different benchmarks. And uh, like my goal is like to do 50 games with each GPU this year. Not on every laptop, but do at least 50 games with an RTX 4050, 4060, 4070, 4080, and 4090, so we can do a detailed like comparison on performance, um, and that way we just get a lot of data, and a lot of people can figure out if how well you know how well each laptop GPU can play their specific game that they love, um, you know, because there's lots of different gaming communities out there. And they all want to know, like, can it run Fortnite? Can it run Apex? Can it run CSGO? And obviously it can run all of those things just fine, but. So we're down, we're installing that. Someone mentioned that there is going to be a, BIOS update. I'm looking for it. I'm not, s oh, there it is, okay. This was released literally yesterday, but it's probably gonna come through Windows Update anyway if we do the Windows Updates. So this 1.1 gigabyte application is, is heavy. It's really heavy. It's taken like five minutes for us to install this thing now. It's not what I like to see. I much prefer it when manufacturers um, keep their control software like light, like lightweight, like a small overall size, small, quick installs, quick updating, and only the minimal interface required to do everything you need to do. Like keep it as minimal as, as possible. So. Alt stand, compared to the G16, this one is smaller, less bright, and a weaker CPU, but costs more. Um, so the G16, I'm not sure if it's smaller. The G18 is the one I compared side by side earlier in the stream. The G16 will probably be more similar in, in performance, I'm guessing. So we're still installing here. Hey Gizmo, is this your personal unit or a Dell review? I spent my own money so that I could review this laptop for you guys. Um, so yeah, and if you guys wanna help support me while this is being installed, I can talk about some of the best competition for this laptop. Um, I was gonna do this anyway, and now well, since we're waiting for it to install, it's a good time to do this. So the best way for you guys to support me without donating or spending money out of your own wallet, some of you guys already donated today and I really appreciate it, um, but don't feel like you have to. You know, the best way to support me as a content creator is to use, just use my links um, when you go to buy a laptop because that's what's going to give me the most money without bothering you guys, really. The only, the only tricky part about the laptop links is that uh, you can't use Honey and you can't use certain coupon codes and other stuff like that, which I hate. I hate not, you know, 
I hate preventing you guys from saving money. So if you can use a coupon code, go right ahead or whatever. But um, but just know that if you want to support me, you can turn off Honey or not utilize that when you're buying a laptop because that does. I found out just recently that that actually prevents any affiliate revenue com to come back to to me. Um, which I found a little surprising, but don't worry about that. Just try to get the best deal you can on the laptop. Um, so right here is the laptop comparison spreadsheet. I have started putting benchmarks on here. We've got the Strix G18 right here. It's up here on the list now. We're gonna be, we're gonna be adding a ton more benchmarks. A Time Spy, Cinebench R23, Red Dead 2 on Ultra. And I'm just going to zoom in on this, make this a little bigger so you can read this text a little, little bit better. But um, we're going to do Red Dead Redemption 2 on ultra settings, no DLSS, no ray tracing, no frame generation. God of War is going to be DLSS enabled on quality. So one game with DLSS enabled on quality. And then Cyberpunk and no frame generation. And then on Cyberpunk, we're going to do ultra with, uh, so the ultra preset, QHD+, plus, all these will be like QHD+, plus, frame generation on, and DLSS on, on quality. So there'll be basically like a raw rasterization benchmark, a DLSS benchmark, and then a frame generation plus DLSS benchmark here on the sheet. I've also added GPU average temperature, CPU average temperature, uh, and then the max fan noise that you're gonna get, like the loudest possible fans from 12 inches in front of the laptop measured by a decibel meter. I'm gonna be start putting those into the sheet here. It's part of every review I do anyway. Um, so there'll be those benchmarks for you guys to compare with. And you can always expand this right here as well to um, look at these side by side and compare them. And you can even check out um, my full reviews as well. So uh, of the laptops, we're gonna be putting them in here inside this list. So right here you can see my unboxing video is already on here. So you can find the links to videos. There's gonna be benchmark source links as well. As we add benchmarks uh, to the list, we're gonna also put in where we found the link. So you're gonna be able to trace around and find even more data, like more reviews of these laptops not just my reviews, I'm gonna include others as well. So I'm gonna be pointing to more reviewers. So you guys will be able to find as much data on each laptop as possible, basically, in one location. That's kind of a, I want it to be a giant compendium of laptop uh, details and benchmarks. So, all right, so we had an error when we're installing Command Center. Surprise, surprise. Like this always happens with Alienware. Um, this says, install shield warning wizard. Another instance of the setup is already running. Please wait for the other instance to finish, then try again. <sighs> Why? Why can't Alienware design a proper installer to like make sure that everything's closed, exits anything that could be an interfere with the installation, and I, yeah. Okay, so this, this says Alienware Command Center Package Manager has been successfully installed or restart is required. So we're gonna go ahead and restart the machine. There we go. So we're restarting the machine now. Um, and Windows Update downloaded it as well. So it's gonna go through some Windows updates and may even do a BIOS update automatically for us here. So Trollord asks, how much was the M16? Is it also the high-end version? So this is like the middle tier version or like the upper middle. It's a RTX 4080 for uh, $25.99. Damon, I wouldn't put Alien Recommend Center on my PC if Dell paid me. <laughs> yep. Uh, if, if only you could control the fans and everything without the Alien Recommend Center, um, then yeah, it would be worth not having it on there. But uh, in the past when I had Alienware Area 51M, I would use the Alienware Command Center to change the fan profile, and then I would basically turn off. So I would set it to like high performance mode or full, full speed fan mode. And then I would exit Alienware Command Center and control 
the CPU undervolting and performance through throttle stop, and uh, the, the GPU overclocking I would do through afterburner. So I wouldn't even use Alien Command Center to do anything other than just the fan speed. Because, yeah. Yep. So, anyway. Uh, Melm said, Yo Gizmo, was going to ask if you wanted your deals comparisons site pinned on the R Gaming Laptop subreddit. Uh, Melm, feel free to pin that. That would be great. I think uh, I'm just here trying to help people. So, if you guys think that that's helpful and useful to people, please pin that at the top of the, the subreddit. That would be great. Uh, Guala Guala says, Why Dell decided to make the 18 inch M series not X series? Uh, this means bad display and worse build quality speakers versus the X16. So the reason that they went M16 versus X16 in terms of naming schemes is the X series is supposed to be super thin, as thin as possible. Um, not really light, but thin, thin and heavy. It's weird. But um, yeah, the the X16 is the more expensive variant, I believe. You know, if we're pricing all the same specs on the inside, the X16 probably costs a little more. But honestly, this is not much thicker than the X16 that I have, you know, that I've I've seen in person when I was at CES. Uh, this is shockingly a fairly portable system. Um, so, Damon says you can't control the fans with something else. Uh, I maybe there there may you know eventually, especially eventually, there'll probably be some kind of third party fan controller software that someone's gonna develop so that way you don't have to touch Alienware Command Center. I don't know, but not that I'm currently aware of. Well, let's see if Windows Hello is gonna find me. It found me. Basically, as soon as I pointed the laptop camera at my face, it instantly found me, so that's pretty sweet. Um, Chloe says, there are, usually it's on GitHub. There you go. There, you know, I'm not gonna do that in this stream, but yeah, there might be a way to use this laptop without Alienware Command Center, which it's probably better, um, but maybe it'll be, maybe this new one will be better than we were thinking. Let's find out, right? So, command center. Is it different now? It's thinking. This is why I don't like the Alienware command center. The update process is usually terrible. Um, you know, like you, you, let's say like I was a student when I had the Alienware and I would go into class sometimes and I would have fans on full speed from gaming the night before I opened the laptop up in the middle of class and it's like, whoosh, and then I'm like, stop, I need to change the fans. And then Alienware command center will detect that it needs to do an update. And then it won't let me access fan controls until the update fully completes. And then it won't, it literally won't let me, um, get the update. Cause maybe I don't have internet in the classroom or something. Uh, and then I'm just sitting there stuck either having a really loud laptop or putting it away. And I think that's a terrible user experience. So that's my review of the Alienware Command Center in the past. Hopefully this is better. I really hope it is. Um, the loading animation looks like it's from 2008. Yes. <laughs> the fan noise be giving me PTSD in the class. What? <laughs> Hope at least the new models get remade, re, re remed, remedied, I think is what you're trying to say. Um, how bad is the screen at being 300 nits? No, the screen looks good. I mean, the screen is a high quality, very colorful display. All right, so we're, we're in the command center. It's working again. Um, we're gonna set this sucker to full speed. We're gonna get HW info. Can you guys hear it? Here's the fans. So the fans are probably full speed now. I mean, they don't sound bad. They're not insanely loud. They're probably about like 55, 56 decibels, somewhere in that range um, for full speed. And they had a nice gradual ramp up to full speed. So Cinebench R23.
Which gaming laptop has a glossy display? I don't know. I don't think, I can't think of any. They're almost all matte or like semi-gloss. Like this is not, like it's it's got a slight reflection to it. It's like semi-glossy, I don't know. Yeah, it looks like, looks like Cinebench didn't copy successfully, so we're gonna have to uh, copy it back over. CPU times by were low until the latest updates. Waiting to see your score. Interesting. Um, I haven't installed that BIOS update yet. We should probably do that before we do this because it may significantly impact performance. I hope my SSD is okay because it's taking a while to load the SSD from the USB, which is different. OLEDs are glossy. Mm, there you go. Yeah, maybe some like OLED from last year. Really nice display. Braxtech, another laptop for us today. That's right. We got the M16 today. So it looks like we might be running into problems with this SSD. Very sad if this is broken. This is my SSD enclosure. You can see it. Basically this two and a half inch SSD drive popped out of, it was dropped a little bit ago onto the floor. Drop test. <laughs> uh. So far, the M16 is disappointing, just errors. Hmm. Are you saying the one that you have, Troll Lord? For some reason, the CPU scores are horrible on this thing. Um, well, maybe they weren't testing it correctly, I don't know. I might need to uh, find another methodology for transferring Cinebench, because this thing may not want to, to go. We're not getting it to go. I'm gonna try the, the rear USB. I don't think that it's Alienware's fault that it can't transfer this SSD right now. It's, I, I think I may have broken my SSD or maybe the enclosure is broken. I gotta think about where my, another, I need to think about where another flash drive would be. You know, I can just download Cinebench. Okay, checking chat again. How's the build quality on the all-metal aluminum? It's really good, Aniket. 
I really, I think this thing is really well built. It feels solid, like a tank. Better than the Strix G18. That's one area where this build I think is better. And I need to adjust the ratings on my sheet a little bit up for this one. Um, Cause it's, it's probably the closest to the Alienware build quality overall. Uh, or sorry, closest to the Razer build quality overall out of the laptops I've seen so far. Uh, Guala says, you have a long experience reviewing gaming laptops. Can you tell me which company is the most reliable and how bad is Razer? Is it good, but people being unfair? So um, my issue with Razer is their customer support can sometimes not be very good. Um, and you're also sometimes paying a premium price. So, and maybe not always necessarily getting as premium of experience, but this year, especially the performance is much better on Razer. Um, in terms of reliability, I think every company has problems. And that's why I almost always get an extended warranty of some kind with a laptop purchase that I plan on keeping for two, three years. So we're gonna try doing this uh, BIOS update for Alienware M16. I clicked it, I double clicked it once already. I'm waiting for it to kind of load here. I don't know why it's taking a while. So, um, Dell firmware update utility. Current version is 1.0. Okay, so none of this is an update for us. We already have the latest and greatest on our BIOS. We don't need to do any updates. Um, let's go ahead and whip up Cinebench R23. Dun, dun, dun. First benchmark of the stream. Woo! All right. FTC says, at Gizmo Slip Tech, just a quick question. Is the screen taking video input from the NVIDIA GPU directly or does it route through the iGPU on the CPU? So this laptop has a MUX switch with NVIDIA Advanced Optimus. Um, that's, my, that's my understanding. We'll try to get into that here soon. I don't know. There, okay. The control panel wasn't running in the bottom right corner, but right here, you can see the indicator there um, telling you whether the RTX 4080 is active or inactive. And right here, we can set whether we wanna be on integrated graphics. Um, so this is advanced Optimus automatically switching. Optimus is like, using the integrated GPU and then NVIDIA GPU mode only. This is how I benchmark using the NVIDIA GPU only, which activates the NVIDIA GPU. So, um, so now we just switched from integrated graphics over to here. Um, looks like we need to restart Cinebench. There we go. All right, and it looks like we are Looks like we're reading everything. So let's see what we get. Advanced benchmark, boom. So right away our CPU package is not getting that hot. We're only getting up to 81 degrees. Our, we're pulling 158 watts. That's really great. Um, oh, now we're jumping down only 52 watts on the CPU. That's not good. It was pulling 150 and now we jump down to 55. Only 23,000 in Cinebench. That's definitely a driver or BIOS update required. Maybe we'll be able to fix this in um, Intel XTU 
So right now we're pulling, we pulled over 100 at the start, but already five seconds in, we're down to 53 watts. Our CPU is only 52 degrees. <laughs> Insanely cool CPU running, but almost no performance, or not no performance, but less performance than anticipated. So um, I'm anticipating they need to update their command center and power limits again, some kind of software update. Uh, maybe we can set that in here. Let's do overclock one. Can I overclock one? Do, do, do. Where, where do we even set this? Do I, let's do a new profile. Where do I even change any of the settings here? I guess you can't change any of the CPU settings. CPU settings are, are locked, it looks like. And here, let's try, instead of full speed, let's try um, performance mode and see if that improves our CPU performance. All right, so our CPU package power is pulling 132, 148, 157, 107, and 54. We're already down clocking severely again. Uh, so next step for troubleshooting, we're gonna go to Intel XTU download, and we're gonna see if we can change, if we can troubleshoot and tweak the power limits on the CPU and boost the performance. Because that's basically like silent level um, performance levels, and they've basically got the, the performance levels mixed up or something's not applying in the background. So I would certainly expect this type of issue to be fixed in a software update soon after the laptop launches. It's very silly though that they didn't get this fully fleshed out before shipping the product because this is a core functionality requirement for the user to have a great experience, right? So. Uh, Yeah, FTC, um, this has a direct connection. So you're saying that your XPS 17 4K monitor is sluggish because that's got the integrated GPU. Yep, and this does not do that. This is a direct connection through Advanced Optimus and a MUX switch. So yep, 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 no problems with that. Which 18 inch laptop give you full wattage on both the CPU and GPU? Um, yeah, the, the Razer Blade 18 is going to have a lower wattage CPU, but it's going to be moderately high. Like, it's still good performance, I think. Uh, but it's not going to be max performance. Now, the GT77 is going to be the maximum possible performance. The SCAR 18, the Strix G18, is going to be very near the maximum possible. Um, but with the GT77, and I believe the GE78, you're going to be able to manually adjust the uh, power limits in Intel XTU. I believe MSI is leaving that unlocked as long as you have the BIOS section uh, like check to allow you to overclock. Um, there's a, a guy on our Discord. So there's a Discord for my channel. If you don't know about it, there's a link in the video description already. Um, you can pop over to the Discord and there's a lot of laptop people on there and you can ask questions or talk about laptops or talk about the videos that I'm putting out. Um, or share your own benchmarks and ask questions or troubleshoot, whatever you want to do on the Discord. But there's basically a community there, and I'm letting you know because I forgot to mention this in the last few live streams. I keep meaning to mention it. Um, and uh, anyway, there's a guy on the Discord, on the Gizmo Slip Tech Discord, and he has a GT77, and his BIOS, um, he had to do a, a CMOS reset on the GT77 because he's trying to overclock the RAM from 4,000 to 4,800. And uh, so, and, and that reset his overclocking capability. So we had to go search through the BIOS and he found the setting that you, you switch it from overclock enabled or disabled. So you, you can overclock the MSI GT77 full manual control to push it to the thermal limits or whatever you want to do with that. Um, and as far as I know, Asus is not going to let you do that this year. I did, I did ask the Asus uh, rep and he said uh, that they don't have any plans on letting users go above 140 watts for the long power limit. But that's still excellent performance and it does automatically keep your temperatures in check. Um, it seems like Asus did a good job testing 
the power limits to make sure that you're getting great performance and keeping the temperatures at a reasonable level. So I really, I think it's not too bad for, in my opinion that they haven't allowed overclocking because uh, they're already basically pushing it right to like the very close to the, to the maximum limit, but you're not going to be able to do like setting world records and stuff like that. Um, this guy with a GT 77, he said with a slight OC, he's gotten like 33.7 thousand, uh, I think in Santa bench R 23 with the GT 77. So almost 34,000. And I, and with a, a bit more tweaking, maybe 34,000 plus is possible with the GT 77. So very interesting. Run the Alienware updater, it may help. We'll see. Now, I've noticed that I've been talking for a couple minutes and we've just been sitting here waiting for Windows Update. Interesting. Interesting. So we're gonna give it time because Windows updates sometimes take like five, 10 minutes. And I don't want to shut it off in the middle of the update. Now, our power button is full RGBing right now. So let me go ahead and try to show that. It's like going, I don't know if you can see it on the live stream. It's like so bright that it's kind of. But it is going like blue, yellow, orange right now. But it was, I've seen it go like green and other colors too. So pretty cool that it's a a multicolor RGB power button. And is there anything else? Yeah, so this this is also RGB right here. And I don't think I really showed this RGB on the back. See that? We've got an RGB bar on the back. And this can also do multicolors. It's not just blue. It's just blue right now because that's what the settings are set up for. So this live stream is showing you the authentic user experience for Alienware users uh, having to go through software updates that may not be ideal. Um, but if the product is good, then maybe it's still worth going through this experience. Um, we'll see. And hopefully, you know, users, let's say like a month from now, won't have this issue either. You just hit auto update and everything works properly. So... Is there an option for always plug in in BIOS battery settings? Not sure to keep it uh, at lower than 100%. Good question, Cream. I don't know if Alienware offers uh, the ability to set it, to, for example, your battery down to 60% to like preserve the life of your lithium ion battery. Um, I'm not sure. So Anakit says, verdict 25.99 insane value at Alienware M16. Um, I wouldn't quite go that far yet. It is good value, I think, if we can get it working properly. So, and I anticipate we will. It's just taking time. Guala says, if the GT77 screen is 18 inch, I would have bought it. I think it, I think they will screw the customers next year dropping an 18 inch. I think the best one to buy is the SCAR 18. Interesting. Interesting idea. I do think that the GT77 would have ideally been an 18 inch machine. That would have been great. Uh, Ash asks, anyone know when a 406070 laptops will be released? They're going to be released on February 22nd. So that's when we're gonna be able to buy those and that's gonna be great. Oh, I'm trying, I'm trying to see if I can get some companies to send me 4050, 4060, or 4070 laptops early so I can actually test them and be able to release benchmarks on day one. But so far, I haven't, any, haven't got any confirmed companies to send me uh, 4050, 4060, or 4070 yet. But uh, even if they don't, I'm going to order a couple of them at least so I can at least get some hands-on and live unboxings like what we're doing today. So it's been... I think close to 10 minutes now waiting here at this, this screen. What do you guys think? Uh, should I start? Should I try just, is it stuck? It's risky. It's anytime you're doing Windows updates or anything related to like potentially the BIOS, 
forcing it to turn off is risky. You might end up corrupting your BIOS and having to do like a CMOS reset. So uh, Chloe says, bricked, question mark. Maybe, especially if I turn it off forcefully now. That would kind of be my fault, but I want to give it five more minutes. So right now it's 405. We'll give it to 410. That'll be about 15 minutes on this one screen. I would think that if it was going to make progress, it was going to make progress by 15 minutes. There, it's finally making progress. Good. Okay, I'm glad I waited. <laughs> yeah, because forcing it off in the middle of reinstalling crucial systems um, information is not good. Not recommended. Okay, so Windows, hello. Hi. Are you there? It is. Okay, it did work. It just didn't really show it. Um, all right. We're back. We're back into Windows. Let's see if Intel XTO works. I, I bricked my Google Pixel doing that. Not fun. Yeah, you, anytime you're doing important system updates, never force the machine off. Always keep it under shore power and make sure that uh, you don't force it off, even if it's stuck. I would say at least let it go for a half hour to see if it'll, it'll fix itself or not. Um, all right. So this is the screen here. We can adjust our, wow, there's a lot more controls in here than there used to be. <laughs> I like it. Um, I'm gonna have to change the battery on my camera here real quick. I see it's almost out, so I'm gonna do it preemptively. All right. Bada bing, bada boom. All right. So this is Intel XTU. Um, this allows you to adjust your core clock speed targets as long as the manufacturer basically lets you. Because depending on how their BIOS is set up, you may not be able to access these menu, or if you open Intel XTU, they may be grayed out, or alternatively, it just may not take. Like if you, if you try to change any settings in here, it just won't actually change anything. So you'll notice right now, Turbo Boost Power Max is set to 55 watts. That's the reason why our Cinebench R23 score is sucking. So we're going to try to boost that beyond. Now I'm going to, before I do anything else, now my understanding is that Alienware Command Center uses Intel XTU to change your settings. That's what Alienware has told me in the past. That said, because it basically it, Alienware Command Center uses Intel XTU to make the system changes. Okay. So that's why you really can't use both of these applications at the same time. So I'm going to go ahead and just open Alienware Command Center and set it to full speed. Now that it's set to full speed, I'm going to close Alienware Command Center. I don't want to open it again. It may impact performance or change the numbers that I have in here back to what it was. So let's see if we can set our long-term power max. We'll try 130 to start with. All right, and our short term, we're gonna bump up to 175. It may not actually pull that much power, but let's see if we can do it. Save, we're gonna go uh, 132, 175, save. All right, apply. And it looks like the settings took. So now we gotta test it in HW info, we're gonna pull up HW info 64. And we're going to also pull up Cinebench again. And let me check chat. Uh, 
fatal. I couldn't change it balance to performance. That's um, I tried. It didn't. There was there was only balance. It was the only option. Maybe inside of here you can change something. Okay, best performance. I just changed it inside of Windows to best performance. Maybe that can also help something. I don't know. We'll see. Um, did that change anything in here? I don't think that changed anything in Windows Intel XTU. Let's find out if our performance is better now. Our package power is pulling 169, 165. Our, our temps are already at 93 degrees. 185 watts to the CPU there. Um, right now we're in a 10 minute test. I gotta change it so we're not in a 10 minute test. But we're, we've reached thermal throttling on the CPU, which makes sense. Um, this is much better performance. Let's do, let's not do a 10 minute test right now. Let's, let's turn that off and let's do a short term test. Here, let's stop. Let's give it a moment to breathe. Okay. We're going to give this Alienware a moment to breathe. We're going to pull, we're just going to pull this sucker all the way up. All right. 185, 185, all across the board. It's, <laughs> this is probably a bad idea. All right. Uh, let's do 175 across the board. All right. 175 max. That's what Asus does as their max. We'll do 175 for our max for our CPU power limit. And let's see our short and our long. And we're going to just see what Cinebench score we get. I'm not going to look at HW info. We're just going to we're just going to punt it here. All right. Plus ultra. <laughs> yes, my hero academia. I just finished catching up on the manga. I am all caught up on the manga and the anime. It's great. Uh, does Alienware M18 have full wattage for both the CPU and GPU uh, because it's a huge laptop? Yes, it should. 31,000 for our Cinebench score? All right. That is so much better. So much better. Look at that. 31,000. All right. So now we have ourselves a proper i9-13900HX. So, um, and we have it through Intel XTU support. So that's fantastic. Um, shall we try a voltage offset? Mm -hmm. It's interesting. Like if I set this, I apply this, uh, is that a, is that a 30 millivolt overvolt or an undervolt? Because I don't want to overvolt this thing. I want to undervolt it. Overvolting, it's going to cause it to get he heat up too quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's... Because in next to you used to be able to, you used to have to put it to a negative 30, and now it's just saying 30. Fans sound loud. Yeah, they are pretty loud right now. Um, yeah, right now it's not showing any voltage offset at all being applied. But yeah, if I look here, it says AVX2 ratio offset, a negative offset applied on a per core ratio. So this is um, downing your clock speed when using uh, rendering with the AVX2 codec, basically. Uh, I don't know if it's a codec. I think it, 
basically though. That's basically what, so when you're rendering video files, like say in Premiere, it's going to reduce your core clock speed um, so that your laptop doesn't overheat, basically. Try thr uh, throttle stop to undervolt. Um, you shouldn't run throttle stop and Intel XTU at the same time. It can cause issues. All right, so for right now, let's go ahead and just, we're gonna start a 10 minute run and we're gonna run it and see uh, what these temperatures are like long term with these wattages. It's gonna basically get to thermal throttling level is my prediction. And then, so right now it's pulling, it pulled over 180 wattage there, 175 right now. So this is the package power that I'm on right now. And so 178, we're already, so because we're, because we're basically overclocking this, it's, it's not technically an overclock, but it's basically supplying all of the juice that you could possibly supply. That's what we're doing right now. Um, and we're at, we're hitting thermal limits at 97 degrees. Our core temps, actually only on two of the CPUs, we're getting close to thermal throttling. Um, I think thermal thr throttle is supposed to be 100 degrees, but we've hit thermal throttling on four of them now. We'll probably hit thermal throttling on more and more as we go along here. Um, but it's impressive that it's not perma thermal throttling at this insane power limit, all right? Um, wow. Hopefully this doesn't cause heat waves in the States. <laughs> I like your sense of humor there, Ash. That's funny. All right. Um, I really wish more laptops ran the 13900HX chip. Seems like there's not that many using that specific chip. I think there's quite a few, actually. So now we're hitting 99 degrees Celsius nonstop. Um, I'm going to try r raising the back of the laptop and seeing if that improves the airflow. All right. So I just raised the back of the laptop up like a half inch with my SSD drive. Let's check out our clock speeds. What are we clocking at right now? Also, our CPU package power has dropped. <laughs> so we must have passed. They must let you increase the power limit temporarily and then they lock it down so the long power limit is not changed. Um, so this right here, the turbo boost power time window is set to 56 seconds. We can raise this to all the way 128 seconds. Um, but let's see if that changed anything. Probably not. Yeah, it raised the power limit back up. We're hitting 145 watts again. Um, so 128 seconds, that's two minutes, eight seconds of the highest level of performance before it starts throttling more severely. Right now we're doing 145, 150 watts and it's not, th it's not throttling. We're in the 70s and 80s. Okay, a couple of the cores went to 90s. So this cooling system setup in the M16 here is just about as good as the Alienware, or sorry, as the Strix G18. It's in the same ballpark of thermal dissipation and clock speed and performance. But this, this is going to throw off our, our 10 minute times, uh, our, our performance for a 10 minute. Your audio is out of sync. Okay, hold on.
Okay, let me know. Is the audio better now? Testing, testing. And there we go. All right. So we've had our performance jumping all around in this in this test. And <laughs> like our power limits went up to 180, 175 at the beginning. And then after a couple minutes, it went down to 65 watts. And then I went in into XT, uh, Intel XTU and changed the long power limit boost window. And that changed it back up. And now it's boosting to 140 watts. And it hasn't gone down to 65 watts again, which is interesting. It's, it's jumping right now between 128 and 140. So, and, and in that range, right around 128 to 140, our temperatures have stabilized in the 58, 78, 80. It's like the 70s and 80s mainly, like low 80s, mid 70s is the temperature across everything. Our average temperature for the whole test so far has been 68 degrees across all cores. That is really good. Um, I'm going to reset it again and see what our average is here in the second half. So yeah, basically 130, 128 package power, 135. So interesting. And our core clock speeds, they're doing 3.9, 3.9, 3.9. And then our E cores are doing 3.3. So when you compare this processor, the i9-13900HX, which is a lower tier bend CPU, we're getting about 200 megahertz less than the Strix G18, like 150 to 200 megahertz less across the whole chip um, on all of the cores, at least all of the P cores, like the performance cores. I always feel a little weird calling them P cores, but they are what they are. Um, still, this is, this is very good, and this is without any undervolt. So I'm anticipating our score is gonna be pretty good, but for a few minutes there, it was lower. We only got two minutes left, so we should finish this test out. Um, but this this 10 minute test is, score is not gonna be anywhere close to the ideal 10 minute test. Can you game on a laptop for five hours straight with maximum performance, or is it normal for heat and noise to increase? I'm new to gaming laptops. So um, basically, as you play a normal game, your our laptop fans will ramp up as the temperatures on the components increase in heat. So if the temperatures on your CPU or GPU go to like 80 degrees, then your fans are gonna start increasing their speed. And a lot of companies let you manually tune your fans to however you want them to be um, with a fan curve. So basically as the temperature goes up, you can manually set the fans to go higher and higher. Uh, that's what a fan curve is. And um, what I have going on right now is called max fans, full, full speed on the Alienware M16 command center. And that's basically running the, the fans at maximum speed no matter what. And so the, the, the loudness of the device is as loud as it can possibly get right now. And I'm guessing that the decibel sounds are probably 56 to 57 decibels right now, I, I would guess. Um, so very, it's very loud. Our average temperature across the whole thing right now is 77 degrees, but our P cores are in like the 80 degrees range. We did have a peak where we hit over hundred degrees on the package. So there's something on the package, maybe the VRMs or something that's hotter 
then the the core temps um and and yeah so we've averaged 134 watts of continuous power through the cpu during this since i've reset it for the last three minutes our overall 10 minute score is dun to dun it's not oh hold on it's not done yet Did I get it in time? Huzzah! Just in time. 28,174. So that's the score we got with these settings in Intel XTU, which is 175 watts with the power boost window to 128. Um, Okay, so this right here, this is the indicator telling us we cannot undervolt the CPU. Undervolt protection is enabled and will prevent voltage from being set below the boot time voltage. Oh, maybe we can, can we undervolt this in the BIOS? Maybe. Uh, Ash Ketchum, this is, that test was not with any undervolting. So, Let's check out the BIOS and see if we can do any undervolting in the BIOS. Wow, it's so quiet now. I'm pressing F2 and F8 just in case it's one or the other. I think we got into the BIOS. Okay, here we are. Here is the BIOS. Is it gonna let me? Yeah, it does, okay. Um, Wow, this is a lot of information here in the BIOS. It was letting me use the mouse. Now it's not moving, it's like stuck over here. Um, interesting. Can I use arrow keys? Well, the mouse moved. <laughs> what is going on with your BIOS Alienware? If you use this in a college library, you will be kicked out. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, in a big open area like that, it's not going to be as loud. So the the mouse the mouse keeps moving. I'm trying unplugging my mouse entirely. Maybe that's causing the problems. And I'll unplug my SSD as well. Don't need that plugged in anymore. Okay, so now I'm getting control. Okay, yeah, I think it just didn't like my mouse. All right, so our boot configuration. All right, so first overview. We can see the overview of our machine. We've got 16 gigs of DDR RAM, 4,800 megahertz for our memory speed, dual channel, QHD plus 2560 by 1600. Our BIOS version is 1079. Boot configuration, integrated devices. So you can enable or disable the camera. So if you don't want the camera on, you can actually disable it here. You can also turn off the microphone. Interesting. Thunderbolt boot support. Type-C dock override. It's impressive. There's a lot of options in here. A lot of custom customizability. We can, you can turn on and off the um, PCIe M.2 slots. Our display brightness. Brightness on power set to this brightness when running on battery. Okay, so... You can set it to automatically dim the br uh, brightness of the display by 50% when it goes to battery, which is set to. Um, check this will turn on eco mode to increase battery life during, to dis reduce display brightness. You have your network connection, your power, 
battery can battery configuration when enabled this allows you to system to run on battery during peak power usage hours use the table below to prevent ac power usage between certain times of the day so you can enable it to do express charge so it charges as fast as possible or you're going to primarily be using the power adapter here so that means that you can increase the life of the the pc so it's going to not it's not going to charge the lithium ion battery very high unless you change this you can also set a custom power charging range so that's also pretty cool so you can set it to like only charge to 80 percent by default which will make your lithium ion battery last a lot longer um, only do that if you don't really need that long of battery life on a regular basis. You can also set a battery charging schedule. Wow, this is complex. I like this BIOS overall. Thermal management. Currently set to ultra performance. Block sleep, enable lid switch, power on lid. Our security, so some security stuff in here. Password, you can set a system password, an SSD password. Um, updates, so you can update your UFEI or your BIOS. System management, you got your keyboard. You can enable or disable the num lock, which this doesn't even have a numpad. Okay, but your FN lock options, this is nice because you can basically make it so that um, you're locking the F1 keys or you're enabling the secondary function keys. Uh, you can switch between them as a primary function, which is nice. Pre-boot behavior, um, adapter warnings. So it if, if there's no power adapter and it's already low battery, it'll warn you that you're almost gonna die. Visualization support. Performance. This might be where we could undervolt if we could. Um, this setting allows you to change the number of atom cores available in the operating system. So, for example, if you wanted to turn off your E cores because it's messing with your some application that's not compatible with the E cores, uh, it's rare, but it does happen. Maybe certain games or certain applications crash with them. You can turn them off. You can turn all your E cores off with probably just clicking the zero right there. Um, enable hyper-threading, enable turbo boost, enable overclocking. How do I turn off overclocking? Okay, at the very bottom, TCC activation offset. This option allows the CPU's TCC offset higher. TCC offset will moderate the CPU performance. What does the TCC stand for? Offset is usually used when describing an undervolt. What would I need to set here? So it's between zero and 15 are your options here. Is this an undervolting? I don't know that it is. No, that's setting what temperature it throttles at. Okay, so interesting. So this allows you to maybe set your um, maximum temperature lower if you're wanting to have your, your target temps um, decrease is basically what chat is indicating to me. Um, that makes sense. That's pretty cool though that they have so many options in here. It's a shame I don't see any uh, undervolting options. Got here late. Did we see any improvements in temps over 2022? Can't mentally handle all the time at 100 degrees in 2022, especially X series. So he has the camera. You're going to be able to set your temperature targets based on your power limits using Intel XTU manually. Uh, by default, this thing runs crazy cool because the power limits are very low. Um, yeah, your system logs. I think that's everything in this. I'm not seeing any other way to uh, undervolt here. So I didn't actually change anything. Interesting. All right, so do you wanna save the changes? No, we didn't change anything of value, so I don't wanna accidentally change anything. Um, so 
Interesting. Uh, so no undervolting as far as I can tell on the M16. That's a shame. I would have loved to see a little undervolting action. That would have been sweet. Um, what else? Hmm. Um, my initial impressions of the M16 CPU performance are that it's phenomenal, but you have to be able to manually use Intel XTU like I did in today's video. Otherwise it's struggle town until they fix the drivers. All right, so Windows Hello did work. It's a bit of a delay, like it's like still loading and then suddenly it's boom, you're in Windows. Um, not as smooth of Windows Hello integration as I would like, but it's probably something that would be fixed in time. All right, are we ready for some Time Spy action or are we gonna do Cinebench one more time? Because we didn't really get a good, let's get a good Cinebench score. Let's get a good Cinebench score and then we'll move on to Time Spy. I wanna get a good 10 minute Cinebench score. Shabam. So hard to buy a SCAR 16. Yeah, it is. It's sold out everywhere as far as I know. How would you rate this 16 versus other 40 series 16s? Is there any better price for these specs? Um, the main, so the main thing I would say, uh, notice how, okay, I wanna point out right away here that our power limits have been reset. They're no longer to what they were. You know, Alienware Command Center probably resets them on boot. So you would need probably something like throttle stop. Service running required. Alienware Command Center service is loading. Please give it, may take up to 30 seconds. Okay. So Alienware Command Center service takes time to load. That's kind of not great. I definitely would appreciate it if Alienware made their their software much lighter weight. All right, so we're gonna set this down to 175 again, or up to 175 for this test. All right, so we've got everything set to max. Full power system throttle, or full fans, 175 watts on the CPU and the GPU. Oh, wait. Come back. We want to raise this up to 128 seconds. All right, are we ready? Ten minute throttle test. Let us begin. Our CPU package power is 172, 183, 169, 173. Here we go. Our temperatures are, we're gonna climb it all the way up to the max and we're gonna see what we can do here. Pulling 179 watts to the CPU, 170. Our clock speeds right now are 4.2 Gigahertz. Awesome. That is awesome. Um, especially since that's matching what the higher end CPU was doing, or very close to it, what the Asus CPU was doing. Not long term, but at least in the short term. All right, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in so you can see a little better on these numbers. And. You can see our, our temps on our package is 99 degrees.
168 watts. I just love that we're able to overclock this CPU or at least set our power limits manually. That is a huge bonus, even if it's, you know, not necessarily on the risky side, but it is on the not perfect. If you want to keep the laptop, say, for 10 years, I wouldn't recommend doing this. I would say set a more reasonable temp target and try to keep it under like 90, 95 degrees long term if you want to keep the laptop super long. So uh, probably more like 130, 140 power limit is probably more what I would set if I was keeping this laptop myself. Um, that said, we want to see what this thing can do. So we're just letting it fly right now. Is the i9-13980HX no longer an option on the M16 and M16, M18 spec sheets? Uh, did they cut it? I don't think they cut it. I just think that they didn't have access to probably that no, enough of those chips to offer it for sale is my guess. So they went with the chip that they have uh, available right now, but they'll probably have the higher end options later on in the year. That's my cur personal guess, but maybe not. We'll see. Okay, I'm gonna be right back. Hopefully this thing has no issues while I'm gone. But so far we're just pulling 155 watts right now. And basically we're thermal throttling down from our 175 watt target, 160 watts. And right now the laptop is raised like a half inch. So Averaging 4.1 gigahertz. Uh, I'm going to leave. Is this good? This is probably the, oh, I can just make this taller. There. All right, so we got our package power right here. And we got our, we got a P core right here at the top. Let's scoot this over a little bit. There we go. All right, and now we got our P cores and our package power. There we go. All right, perfect. We get to see everything in one screen now. This is making me want to cancel my order. <laughs> hey. I'm here to inform. You make decisions with your wallet however you're going to make them, all right? I'm just providing the info for you to make your decisions. To me, this information doesn't mean that you should cancel your order as long as you're willing to deal with janky software. That's that you if you're willing to deal with the software, I think this laptop's going to be good. So far, that's my initial impression. Especially if you know how to use Intel XTU then this thing is becomes, in some senses, a little more attractive than the SCAR 16 because you can't um, increase the voltage on, uh, or increase the wattage, sorry, the power limits on the SCAR 16. You're limited to 140 watt maximum uh, for the long, long power limit. So, yeah. So in some senses, this machine should be faster than the SCAR 16 in a head-to-head -head comparison, but that's going to be with you pushing the CPU manually to the maximum limit. But like I said, what I would do if I was owning this laptop is I'd probably set it to like 140 watts manually, which is basically what Asus is doing anyway. And then you're gonna get probably basically nose to nose, like right, like very similar performance side by side. But the SCAR 16 might slightly outperform it because it has a better bend processor. Dell is stupid for making bad software controls. Yeah, Chloe, I, would, I wouldn't call them stupid, but you can call them what you want. <laughs> it's certainly not ideal. Like they need, to make their, they need to make their software lightweight, you know, low demand, easy to update, um, and always prioritize the user being able to change the performance settings immediately and quickly 
before being forced to do an update or whatever. That's my feedback so far. So I'm going to be right back. I'm going to get more water. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Making plans for the weekend. Gonna go to a crawfish restaurant and then go bar hopping tonight in Houston. So that should be fun with some friends. I was thinking about mounting this to the camera, but then it's backwards and yeah, it's fine. Okay, so right now, temperature of the keyboard and deck. Um, right side of the keyboard, in front of it by the arrow keys, is cool. Touchpad is cool. Left side in front of the keyboard is cool. WASD keys are warm, not hot, but warm. Middle of the keyboard is a little warmer, but not hot. Right side of the keyboard is just a little warm. Along the top, these are fan intakes. Top middle is warm. Left side's cool. So overall, the chassis itself is not that hot. So it looks like the whole time that we've been running the test, we've been averaging 159 watts of power to the CPU. That is a fantastic. That is really, really great. Look at those fans go. Jeez, yeah, the fans are going. Okay, 19 seconds left. Let us see what we get. I wish we could undervolt. That would probably boost our score by like 1,000 or 500 at least. This laptop needs a runway. Because it's a jet engine about to take off. Boom! That's the joke, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. 30,193. That is higher than the Strix G18. Uh, that got 29,000 something. Let's go ahead and put this in to the sheet. So here we are on the, the sheet now. Let's go down to the Alienware M16. I want to update this. Okay, there we go. So Alienware M16, we got 30,193. Oh, that's the wrong column. We want to put it into this column. All right, 30,193. And the Strix G18 got 29,819. So this got about 400 points more than the Strix G18, and this has a lower spec CPU. It's because we were able to push it to a higher power limit. That is why. 
Um, we're going to do one more test. Just a raw, basic, quick run test. A single run because we didn't really do that after we changed the power limits. Let's see what we get. This will only take like 10 seconds to do, so that's very good. Do, 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 do. 30,990. That is heckin' impressive. Super freaking impressive. All right, so time to install Time Spy. Let's go. Do, do, do. And then we're gonna do some Hogwarts action. So that's our next stop after this. Beautiful. So, chat, I'm just, I'm curious. I, while we're waiting for the Steam to install, what is your number one laptop choice if you could choose? Let me know in the chat below. And why? What is like the top feature that you're most that you think is the most important? That's like making you lean towards that machine. Legion Nine. That's that's not even a thing. Because Legion. <laughs> uh, Daniel Martinson, Scar 18, but what is the reason? Um, all right, 3D Mark, install. You would pick a MacBook Pro 16 M2 Max any day if you didn't need to program with CUDA? Interesting. That's interesting. See, I would never pick the MacBook up because I want to play games. <laughs> and, uh, and I need a high, re high resolution, high response rate display. And uh, the MacBook displays are great, but... I have yet to see a MacBook display with a fast response rate. Um, are the new ones over 60 hertz yet? Last time I checked, they were only 60 hertz still. But really bright and vibrant. So, Yanto says, got to be an XMG Electronics Tongfang with a 4080 and the water cooling. Interesting. That's, uh, that's interesting, Yanto. So you'll want to definitely come back for my live stream with the XMG Neo 17. It's in a box, just like right outside my door, right out here, so. Anthon asks, ask, did you like the G18? I really like the G18. If you want a moderately priced, big display laptop, it's, it's really great um, so far. Very few things to complain about. The biggest thing I think right now is the coil line. I keep noticing it on my unit. So I think that might be a deal breaker for some people and make them want to return it. Um, and I gotta say, I haven't noticed any coil line on the Alienware uh, yet, but we haven't ran any GPU focused tests yet, so. Macro Pros are 120 hertz on the new with an adaptive refresh rate. Nice, that's a lot better. I'm curious if the 120 hertz refresh rate still has a good response rate though, because just because you have 120 hertz, it may still have a lot of ghosting or whatever issues for 
um, gaming, but that is a lot better than previous. So nice. What causes coil line? So there are coils, electric, literally coils of wire in the VRMs um, that they send electricity through and coil winds cost when you send a high amount of electricity through those coils and they vibrate. Um, and they cause, it's like a, it's like a whiny sound. Um, and it can really bother some people and other people just don't care or whatever, but it doesn't bother me at all when the fans are going, but when I'm in like performance or turbo mode and I load up into a GPU heavy task and the fans haven't ramped up yet, all, you know, all you're hearing is this, like the coil wind going on with the Strix G18. So, um, it's like louder than the fans initially. And then once the fans go, all you hear is the fans pretty much. But um, I think that's gonna bother some people. If you use headphones, you literally won't hear it at all through your headphones probably. So um, it depends on your use case, whether or not it's gonna be an issue for you, I think. Jordan Liu says, I'm thinking a Strix 164080 or a 7i Pro. You mean Pro 7i, but yeah. Uh, Jariah says the response time is trash. I think you're talking about the Max. Yeah, the response time, probably for the 120 hertz display, it's probably still trash compared to like a good gaming display. Um, the only thing about Apple is, is that it's pushing for its own software systems, programming language, and propriety, proprietary APIs like Metal. Um, yeah, Apple's all about you need our software, you need our um, hardware, you need everything to be in a streamlined setup and it all needs to be compatible with everything that's within the Apple ecosystem. And I, I love that and I hate that because Apple does closed in systems. So like you wouldn't be able to probably use a tool like Intel XDU to overclock your MacBook. Apple's probably going to just prevent that from happening. Um, so, yeah, Apple ends up with a very streamlined ecosystem, but just doesn't allow for user customizability or upgradability or repairability sometimes. And that can just be really damper on the user experience for a lot of people. And so that's why like, I hope Apple doesn't crush the PC space into non existence. Right now, I don't think they will. There's a strong balance between Windows and Apple. Um, but if Apple were to like start competing across all the different PC spaces better, which they, they have been doing better and better job over these years, they might, actually, they might actually be able to really hurt the PC space, say, 20 years from now. I could see Apple completely killing the PC market, maybe, eventually. Right now, it's not a thing. It's not happening at all right now. But their technology is better, I think, than what Intel is doing. So um, not better than what NVIDIA is doing with 3D graphics cards. But maybe eventually they could try to compete in that space and win. Um, Reva Tuner is locked up for some reason. There we go. Okay. Um, that was weird. It was like a different application was in the foreground versus the background. All right, so we're going to turn on our temperature usage. Core clock. Power. We're going to turn on our limit limits. This shows us how we're being limited. And then we're going to do our overall CPU temperature and CPU usage. We'll do frame rate, frame rate average, and our 1% lows. Apply, and then we got to do our benchmark keys. I wish I could just auto configure this and just keep all the configurations the same every time I install. Afterburner. If anyone in chat knows how to do that, please email me instructions on how to do that because I could not figure that out. It feels like there should be some way to set that up so that it's the same every time, though. 
All right, and here we go. I think we're ready. Uh, Yanto says, are you planning on testing the 80-watt 4080s and some benchmarks online? Are making these seem like great low-power GPUs and be great with a Ryzen CPU? Interesting. Hmm. I have not uh, tested any low-watt 4080s. I may end up doing that. But uh, which, which laptops have a low-watt 4080, like, a, uh, like the Zephyrus G14, for example? But that, that goes to 125. Um, maybe like the Stealth series is an 80 watt. I don't MSI maybe. I don't know which which review. You should just email me the review so I can look at it. Um, for whatever 80 watt 4080 you're talking about. All right, Time Spy. Are we ready to run this thing? I think so. Checking, thinking, everything through. I believe we're ready to go. Run. Here we are. Walla says, if Apple just brings the top 10 games from PC to Mac, it's game over for PC laptops and desktops. The thing is, they aren't even interested in gaming, only mobile gaming, so you end up with a boring machine. Yeah, that's a big part of it. Um, I feel like Apple feels like if they were to try to cater to the PC gaming crowd, they would end up alienating their professional crowd. But like, why don't they just make like a Mac that's focused on the gaming side, like a Mac G or something, you know, like a G series or, you know, something like that. Um, and it's like a little bit thicker laptop than the typical MacBook Pro. And, and then they, you know, have a high refresh rate, 240 hertz display on it instead of the slower refresh rates. And then they tune the CPU and GPU to be focused on gaming instead of productivity. If they did that, they would be able to compete really, really well. But they would need to also have a big push initiative to... Uh, port like thousands of PC games over to Mac, not just the top 10. They would need to do like hundreds of them to, towards thousands of them. Um, so that's my initial thoughts. All right, so taking a look at what we got. Show me what you got. Um, 175 watts to the GPU there. We're bumping up to that 175 watt limit. I love to see that. That's great. Our boost clocks on the GPU are also excellent at 2460, 2430. Um, we're hitting high GPU utilization. And notice our GPU temperatures at 56 degrees. They haven't spiked up much yet. But let's look at those temperatures as this test goes along. Those are icy cold temperatures for Time Spy. Most laptops would already be at 75, 80 degrees by now. Um, wow. Okay. I'm, I'm really impressed with those temps. It's still not going above 60 folks. It did not go above 60 that whole first test. Um, I'm pretty sure the Strix G18 didn't stay that low. I think it went to the low seventies. <laughs> I think I'd have to review it. Um, I'm really curious. I'm going to pull that up. I am going to pull that up right now. So I don't have to just say what it is without looking it up. But I have a feeling it, it went to the mid-70s. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Okay, so the Strix, Strix G18 hit 70 degrees. In Cinebench, or sorry, in Time Spy, 72. I don't know if it was on max fan mode or not, though. So that's the main question. It needs to be running the same. It might have been in turbo mode. But wow, these temps are insane on this M16. 63 degrees. That's the highest I've seen all tests, this whole test so far. <laughs> Whoo. All right, jeez. Yeah, so the Strix G18 got up to 81 degrees at the end of the test uh, for test one. 
Wow. Wow. Now, that, that may have been only turbo mode on the Strix G18, so take that with a grain of salt, right? I need to make sure that that's... If it was Max Fans, what's Max Fans versus Max Hands? Because we're running Max Fans here. And CPU temps are shooting up all the way I went up to 100 degrees Celsius there for a moment. Oh, shoot. You guys can't see the test. Oh, I'm going to have to redo this. I gave you the play-by-play. -play. Oh, man, we got 19,536. That's 500 more than the Strix G18. That is impressive. Um, what did we... Wait, what was our... Crap, what was our CPU score? Okay, all right. Um, this window is so bright, it's blowing out the rest of my screen. Chat, I am sorry that the camera was not in the right position. We are fixing that uh, for this run. We're going to do it again. Not Time Spy Extreme. Time Spy. Here we... So it was 15,717 for the CPU score. Um, okay, so this is this is the Strix uh, G18. So you can see the temps went up to 81 degrees. Um, and if I jump ahead, the Strix G18 got 15,880 in manual fan mode and 19,000. So, let's see here. I want to make sure. Yeah, so that 81 degrees was with the turbo fans, not manual fan. Let's see what, it, what our temperatures were in. This is our temps in manual fan mode. So 73, 74. The Alienware is still doing a lot better temps on the GPU, 78 degrees on the Strix G18. So pretty insane. Let's do this again. Sorry we missed it on the first run. Um, my exposure is all wonky on here because the background, there, I'll make it big there. That's pretty better. Um, the background's kind of dark and then the foreground's white and it makes everything look all weird. Um, Amon Smith, any word on the 4090s can be purchased on Alienware? No word yet. Thank you so much for the $2 super chat, Amon. Um, it uh, does mean a lot to me when you guys support me. Thank you very much. But uh, yeah, appreciate it. Haresh Haraji says, I'm getting an X17 3080 Ti i9 13th gen for 3800 Wow, I don't think I would buy that for that price, unless that's an international price. Um, it, I, if you're going to spend 3800 I would definitely go for a 4000 series GPU laptop. It's, it's a huge upgrade in performance. Um, I would only go RTX 3000 series if you're spending... In like the fifteen hundred, like between a thousand and like two thousand dollar range, that's when I would go for maybe a, a high powered thirty eighty Ti or thirty seventy Ti. Yeah, uh, in this current market. Um, scrolling down here, Vicky Vicky says no G eighteen will win. Um, all right, here we go. Look at these juicy performance numbers. Um, interesting. The wattage on the GPU was not going up to 175. It's dipping lower than it did the first time. Um, interesting. So it's, now it's 175. I wonder why it was dipping lower there for a little bit. It was like down to 160s. It should be like basically going at least 170 plus this whole test for the most part. Um, Steven Onashi says, love these daily streams, Gizmo. Thanks, Steven. Um, 
Fatal says, G18 already lost. K cool. <laughs> um, Vicky says, CPU wattage. Well, CPU wattage is going to be extremely low in Time Spy. I see it's not reading correctly again. Um, we need to add that in HW info instead of using Afterburner for that. Yeah. These temps are insane. They're so good. Now, you guys can see these temps, right? Yeah. Okay. These temps are just incredible. They're so good. Um, the GPU in the first test did not go above 60 degrees Celsius, pulling 175 watts. How crazy is that? And it makes me wonder, can you actually overclock this GPU to like the MSI GT77 levels of performance, getting like 23,000 um, centibench and in like with an RTX 4090? Um, and probably over 20,000 with an RTX 4080 like we have in this laptop. <laughs> probably. Like, okay, 61 degrees. That's the highest. Those temps are bogus. Okay, so um, the reason why, okay, interesting. So we got 19,298 on our second run, uh, which is a little bit lower. Awesome, awesome sauce. Really, really impressive overall. Our CPU score is a little bit higher, right? So the M16 is, is at least this silicon is tuned to go a little higher. Um, if I go over to yesterday's clip here and I go into here, you'll notice our clock speeds here are at 2300 megahertz. So it's almost like the Alienware is tuned to overclock. Let's go a little further. Yeah, so it's like tuned to overclock because we're hitting like 2,400 megahertz um, boost clock. So we're just hitting higher boost clocks. It, it might be the silicon lottery, but I'm guessing that they, the engineers at Alienware tuned the GPU specifically to pull a little more wattage, maybe even above 175, and hit higher boost clock. This does have a vapor chamber with liquid metal element 31. It's just basically liquid metal, as far as I know. It's like, uh, I don't know if it's pure gallium, but I think it's pretty close. Okay, I'm gonna run it one more time, see what we get for our third run, because that was a pretty good amount of variance between everything. Oh, before I do that, can we check? NVIDIA max temperature. The max temperature on the NVIDIA GPU is 70.6 uh, on the hotspot and 64 degrees on the GPU temp. Crazy. So good. So good. Will I do a similar stream on the X16? I might. 
I currently don't have plans to do that anytime soon. I don't have an X16 coming my way. So, Guala Guala says, should 1080p resolution give you better FPS on a 4090 laptop, or will you end up with slightly with slight performance over 2K and 4K because of CPU bottleneck? So, 2K screen is always better than 1080p for 4090. Uh, no, you're going to get a performance boost going down to 1080p, especially in esports games. Um, but it's going it's to depend, right? Uh, but you'll still get a small performance boost because there's less calculation to be done um, at 1080p. Unless the game is hard CPU bottlenecked at like all resolutions, which is really rare. Like even in CSGO, which is a CPU bottlenecked game, we, were going, we went from like 500 FPS on the Strix G18 at QHD up to like 700 or 600 something at 1080p. So... Obviously, over 500 FPS is plenty for the G18, even at QHD. So I think that is the better sweet spot in general. I think QHD 240 hertz is the right sweet spot for most people, unless you're maybe playing a game like Warzone, where you're trying to get uh, as many FPS as possible and you're still not hitting that 240 FPS um, cap, then 1080p is going to be easier to hit that 240 FPS target. Row Rod says, I was regretting ordering the M16 until I saw your live stream. Thank you. Yeah, no, this, the cooling on the M16 is next level. The, the overclock we're getting on the GPU is phenomenal at the same time. So in terms of raw GPU performance, the M16 is actually performing slightly better than the G18, at least in time spy. It doesn't necessarily mean in actual games it's going to do better. Um, we got to actually do the game tests and find out. But in theory, it should be a, a few percentage points faster than the G18 in terms of raw performance. Um, and and it, I think that will likely translate over to gameplay, uh, but it might not. We'll see. Does the keyboard have any hotspots where you feel these temperatures? Um, the WASD keys are a little warmer than say the keyboard rest, but they're not hot. None of the keys, none of the chassis where you would normally touch right now is hot at all. They're just like slightly warm, which is great. And that's probably the work of that little middle fan moving air around that middle of the chassis and out the back. So helping keep the overall chassis temperature much better than past Alienware M laptops. When will you test, test actual games? Um, right after this. We're going to do the Hogwarts next. That's the next test. We've already done the display test. So we've taken off the bottom. We've ran Cinebench. We overclocked. We did Cinebench out the box, which is only like 18,000. But it's just, I'm not even going to count that score because that's just a driver issue. Um, yep. Overall. As long as you're willing to deal with finicky software, this laptop's going to be awesome. It's going to be great. Not quite as great of a display, but still a, a good enough display to be happy with if you're gaming indoors and mainly using it indoors. Graphic score of 19,458 for the Time Spy. Whew, really, really great. CPU score of 15,587. And if we hop over to the G18... We can see that our CPU scores are very close. This beats the GPU score or the CPU score in turbo mode, but not in manual mode. So it's, it's competitive right up there with what you'd expect the CPU score to be versus the competition. Let's go ahead and get Hogwarts installing and see how well this machine runs Hogwarts. And um, I'm going to be doing a live benchmarking stream with this laptop um sometime soon not probably tomorrow but within the next few days so or yeah within a week i will say i'll try to do a live benchmarking stream with this within a week um now well hogwarts is installing let's go ahead and take a look at the top laptops that this laptop is competing against so this will be a quick like spec feature comparison for the money. Um, and I think there might be a couple other laptops to consider in here. 
Uh, and I need to do a little bit more research just to make sure, because I think there's more and more competition around this price point. This is $2,600 for this machine. So we're going to be looking at, at that. So uh, first of all, let me go ahead and update the list. So you guys get all the latest benchmarks. Um, my guys, uh, Kalen and Ellie are currently in the process of updating this list. And if you subscribe to follow the list, you're gonna get these updates that I'm putting out right now. Add more benchmarks for more laptops. So like this kind of update, it's just a brief summary of what the update is. So those 15 people just got an email telling them, hey, I updated the list. Um, so if you want to follow the list, you just click this follow button and it'll email you now whenever an update goes out. Um, okay, so top laptops competing with this laptop. We're going to set our price target um, to 1800 to 2870. All right, so these are all the laptops in this price range. We've got the Strix G18, the Legion Pro 7i, Alienware M16, Oris 17X, which costs $100 more, MSI GE68, that only has a 4070. Don't get that for that price point. That's a bad deal. Um, that's definitely not the way you want to go. Oris 17H, this has a 360 hertz display. Might be an interesting option if you're looking for a cheaper eSports option. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't recommend it. I'd recommend a QHD display with a higher TDP GPU. Um, the Alienware M16, there's also, I think, an option for four, a 480 hertz display if you're an eSports player for the Alienware M18. I would explore that option as well. Um, I believe we have a Dell link here. So you can go over to Dell and look up do they have the so they don't have the display option currently available for the 480 hertz but they should in the future so if you're patient you could go ahead and get a 480 hertz uh display there and if you're like a big esports gamer that's probably the best esports laptop that you can buy in this price range uh stealth studio 17 with a 4080, it's gonna be a little thinner, but I wouldn't recommend it um, unless, even, even if you're looking for something more portable, I wouldn't recommend it. It's just got too low of TDPs and it's not thin and light enough for the, the performance you're sacrificing. Um, so between the M16, I think the main competition is the Strix G18, the Lenovo Pro 7i, the Aorus 17X. Yeah, those are the really, those are the four. These four guys right here are going to be the number, the top four laptops to consider right around this $2,500 to $2,800 price point. And um, I would not be surprised if the M16 ends up with the highest level of performance based on the performance we saw in TimeSpy. But we need to do more testing to verify and, and everything. And the M16 also lets you overclock or ups, up, up the power limit on the Cinebench um, sorry, on the CPU, allowing you to push higher performance in CPU, but it's not by much. It's just a small percentage increase. So I don't think that's that big a deal. Um, I don't know if the Legion Pro 7i will let you do that or not. They might. Now, um, yeah, in terms of availability, I think the M16 is currently available the Pro 7i is also available for pre-order on uh, Lenovo's website. Um, I don't know. I think the Alienware M16 is probably your number one uh, choice if you want to get it anytime soon. Dell usually has a high amount of volume, so you should be able to get that quickly. The, the Aura 17X, I'm also anticipating um, not too much demand for that. Uh, well, there's going to be a high demand, but it's not gonna be super high. So you should also be able to get an Aura 17X. Um, it looks like it's available for order now, but it did sell out. 
uh, for a little while there. So I'm expecting these laptops to all come into stock and be available and then unavailable off and on here. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised in the next week or two if all of these were to sell out at least temporarily or not be available quickly. Anyway, um, chat, if you have any questions on those laptops, please let me know. Um, Hogwarts is still downloading. It's downloading at 41 megabytes a second. It estimates 25 minutes remaining on the install. Chris, Chris X S asks, why is the Strix G18 or G16 more expensive? Um, where do you see that it's more expensive? I don't, the Strix, the Strix G16 currently doesn't have any price in the US and I'm anticipating that it'll probably be the same price as the G18 or maybe a hundred to $200 lower. That's my current price prediction because a 16 inch chassis with the same features should be a little bit cheaper. Um, that's, that's my, to my best knowledge. But if you have a place where it's for sale, hit me up, email me the link so I can put it on the sheet um, or at least update the price on the sheet for everyone because I want to try to include as much information on the sheet as possible. Uh, since the display is only 300 nits, could you max the brightness now and compare it to the G18 with 500 nits? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, let's do that. Since we're waiting for the install, let's pull it up side by side. All right. Um, Chwam bam. All right, so we're gonna do a screen side by side comparison. Alienware M16 versus the Strix G18. Does the Strix G18 look too thick and is it hard to carry? Um, I don't think it'd be that hard to carry, but I'm not someone who would worry about that too much. Um, I did do a side-by-side -side comparison earlier in the live stream if you wanna see them right on top of each other. All right. Um, I gotta plug in the I gotta plug in the G18, guys, hold on. Hmm. I'm out of plugs on that side of the wall. Gonna have to stretch it. Uh, are you guys getting stream lag? Let me
Okay, we're almost, almost ready for this display test. Does it look good? Let's see here. You guys see it? I'm trying to make this little thing as small as I can. Let's change between a few different options here. I gotta say, color-wise, I feel I I feel like the M18. I feel like the M M16 might be slightly higher colors, but it's it's very they're very difficult to it's very difficult to tell that. I can tell that the um, G18 definitely gets brighter. Like it's like right in the peaks here, it's just, it's a little bit brighter, but in terms of how the color punch hits you as a user, the colors on the M16 might be just a little bit more impactful, a little bit more noticeable, but it's, that also might just be the, the angle that I'm looking at them. So I'm looking at it straight on now. The colors look like pretty much identical. But that is definitely a, a, a slightly brighter display. Like visually I can tell looking at them that it's the brighter display. Oh, could you also test the speakers? Good question. That's a, we can do that too while we're waiting for um, Hogwarts to download. Okay, so this will be the last image. And... Yeah, I don't... I. I don't think that this display should stop you from buying the M16. This display is gorgeous. But the, G, the G18 display is bigger, you know? So it's gonna be better if you wanna do lots and lots of gaming on the display itself, you know? So. Okay, okay. Let's do a speaker test, y'all. So I can't use the sound. I can't use the the song that I had used previously. Because I ran into some copyright issues with it. So we're going to use a different, we're going to, need to use a different song. What about fan noise? Um, fan noise. I'm just going to set it to, I'm going to set it to performance. Um, fan noise is, I think, a little quieter on the G18 overall when they're both at max fans, like the M16 has more of a whistly sound to it. 
Um, but the um, the cool temperatures on the M- M16 really shows that, you know, you can get uh, really great temperatures on the M16. So I don't know. I'm sure there's some kind of balance fan mode um, where you can get good temps and the fans won't be too loud, I'll bet. Okay, we need to go to... Actually, let's go to art list. For the speaker test. Um, speaker test. Let's do it. Also, I hate this blue keyboard. Can we try to change this keyboard? All keys, rainbow wave. Oh, that's so much better looking. Mm, 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 mm. Yes. That's what I'm talking about. That is, that's good. All right. Uh, I really love the way the keyboard looks. It's it's a really nice keyboard, vibrant keyboard. Uh, let me get signed into Artlist so I can do this music test. Cool. All right. We can play a good amount of music through here because I already know that it's not going to have any licensing problems. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know which one to do. Uh... Let's try this one for now. I'll put the mic close to the speaker. I'm playing with the so uh, in here I can set different um, Dolby Atmos levels of audio I would say that the sound to me is not as clean as the G18 the mids and highs are not as clean the bass is also not as strong I think the speakers are pretty loud um, that's why I was kind of getting in here and I wanted to try a couple different modes. I'm going to try dynamic and see if that works well. Let's see.
All right, last song. Let's see what this sounds like. Okay, so my opinion is the mids and highs could be better. The lows are there a little bit. It could also be better. I'd give it uh, like a 7, maybe a 7.5. Just a little bit worse than the Strix G18. Still above average compared to cheaper notebooks for sure. Um, but not amazing on the speakers. I wouldn't call them amazing. So there's your speaker test. That's the best I can do for now. Um, I want to do a decibels test. I need to start getting that out again. Asus always wins in sound. Often does. Yeah, it really does. Not always, but I would say I would say often. These are also down firing speakers, so if you're um, on if you're on a table, it's going to sound a lot better than if it's on your lap and it's like just shooting away from you. So, my Lenovo Pro Seven I I think sounds better than this. I don't know better than the G eighteen too, but not as good as my Scar used to be. Um, okay, is Hogwarts done downloading yet? Yeah, so Hogwarts, I would say the internet speed, the download speed I'm getting on this is not as good as what I was getting on the G18. I don't think it took this long to download this game. But overall, man, this I can see why this laptop would be pretty compelling for a lot of people. One of my lights just went out. Having to deal with lots of batteries with all this uh, this filming setup. I need to try to make sure all my lights and cameras are permanently plugged in. It will make my stream live streaming uh, better. So let me check chat. It could also be Steam slowing the download speed, maybe. But I'm guessing... Like, I think I was getting closer to 60 megabytes uh, or megabits downloaded on the G18 when I was downloading games. And so this is like 20 megabits slower. And usually it's related to the Wi-Fi, but we didn't update the Wi-Fi drivers yet on the M16. So that could also be an issue. We need to go through all these. It's like I had to do like five cycles of Windows update on the G18. So after the, the stream, before the live benchmark stream. You could also change out the Wi-Fi chip for like 30 bucks and get upgraded. What's my favorite gaming laptop? I don't know yet. Um, probably the GT77 or the Blade 18. Those are very specialized and different. But that's kind of the two that I'm leaning most. Well... I'm not real. I've already ruled out buying the GT77 for myself because I don't want a laptop that's quite as deep as that because it won't fit into my filming backpack that I carry all my camera gear with me. Um, so I need I need a laptop that'll easily fit into that backpack, which the Blade 18 is like not much bigger than my Legion Pro 7i. So so yeah. Um. And honestly, after testing this Alienware M16, I'm like, this thing is really nice. And it's, it, if I could buy a top line spec with the M16, I, I'm, not against, I'm not against considering it because we do have that full-size SD card slot in it. And I'm curious how fast that SD card slot is. We could test that. I don't think I need my SD card slot. Um, let's test the SD card speed. Okay. So I've got, a, I've got a bunch of video files on here. 
All right. So this is a uh, ultra fast UHS two or I can't remember the exact name of it, but it is a super fast uh, SD card with, let me show, I'll show it to you here. This is the card. Okay, so it's a pro grade, 256 gig, 300 megabytes a second, uh, read 250 megabytes a second write with the double strip for reading and writing really quickly. Um, can you change the RAM on the M16? You can change the RAM. Yeah, it's they are, they are not soldered and they're both upgradable without flipping the motherboard over. Okay, so here's a five gig file. Let's see how fast we get on the transfer speed. So, uh, I don't know if you guys saw that. I'm gonna do another, I'll do another copy. But it was, so it started at over 200 there, but we're doing 145. Yeah, about 180 megabytes a second, not 180 gigabytes a second. That would be insane. Um, but yeah, that is very, that's still very fast. So it's, it's varying between 140 to 180 in that range um, with this high-speed SD cards. So that's certainly like a UHS-2 fast SD card reader, not like one of those cheap ones. It is actually utilizing the at least close to the full speed of the SD card. So kudos to Alienware for not skimping on a crappy SD card reader in their laptop. Um, is it still muted? Lebroni asks, is, uh, is the sound still working guys? Testing, testing. SSD clone. So to SSD clone, I should basically back up my old laptop and then reset my M16, then restore it. Uh, so Killajohn Lee, I would not recommend doing that. If you're moving from one laptop to another laptop, I tried basically cloning my SCAR 15 uh, and then switching it over to the Legion. Um, and it caused all kinds of driver's issues wasn't a good idea. I thought I would try it and try just swapping all the drivers. Bad idea. Windows ended up basically breaking. Don't want to do that. Uh, what you want to do is copy all of your key files into an external SSD um, or an external drive. And then you'll want to start a new fresh install uh, with that new 
with that new laptop. And if you're trying to put a new SSD in there, like an upgraded SSD, you'll want to put that in there with a formatted. So wipe that SSD clean and you'll want to use an ISO Windows install file from that manufacturer. Cause there are now like key drivers uh, on the drive on the SSD itself that each manufacturer puts on there that basically makes it so you have to use the Windows install file from that support page. Otherwise it won't work well. So sounds good. Okay, sound is all good. That's good. So Hogwarts is almost done loading now. Woohoo! We are ready. You know what that means? It's time to get out the the robes. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and hit play. I'll be right back. <laughs> Wingardium Benchmarko, let's go. <laughs> the game sounds really good. High quality game audio. <sighs> I love these robes, they're so nice. They're like really expensive universal um, robes, they cost I think these were over $100 for these robes. And with the scarf, I think it was like 150 or something like that. You put on your robe and wizard hat too? Yes! Thank you. Everyone, put on your robes. Get out your wands. It's time to cast some spells. Go on an adventure. <laughs> Doggo knows Ravenclaws are bad. That is not true. We are not evil. We're just smart, okay? <sighs> Always misunderstood, us Ravenclaws are. Okay. Let's go ahead and get into it here. All right, so... Let's get our HW info pulled up. We want our we want our CPU displaying correct info for the game benchmark here. I believe that's what we need and then Maybe that, uh, we won't worry about that. We'll go to, I th think that is what we want. And we want package power, CPU package power. Okay. Okay, so we got megahertz of the top core, the nut core one, and then we've got our package temp and our package power right there. And in afterburner, I can go ahead and disable I can disable the CPU stuff. Sweet. Okay, we are ready to game. 
So let's go do a quest. See what kind of FPS we get. Oh, uh, we're capped at 60 FPS. Oh, we got to change our settings. Check our settings. So we've got frame generation on. DLSS is on quality. We want no cap to our frame rate, of course. And RTX is off because that crashes the game. Though the game did get an update today. Maybe it doesn't crash now. We're clocking 170 FPS. We're still getting stutters though. Um, I need to track it. Let's go do a quest. Well, first, let's go run through our area of the map that we're supposed to do our benchmarks at. Over here in Central Hall of Hogwarts, the most magical. You know, School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Wee -hee. Wait, are we in the right spot? Mm. Uh, I don't think we're in the right spot. Central Hall. This should be better, I think. All right. Ah, uh, beautiful. Okay, so this area has a ton of NPCs running through it. Um, I'm gonna switch my benchmarking over to Hogsmeade eventually. But I haven't gotten that far in the game yet, so we're just gonna do here for now. All right, so Hogwarts run with frame generation on and DLSS on quality. Do, do, do. Boom. Okay, so. 140 FPS. I believe that's a little bit lower than what the Strix G18 got, but we're not in full fan mode. Let's go to full fan mode. Let's get this jet engine launched. And I just wanna make sure that these are still being applied. These power limits. Uh-oh. Hogwarts crashed. It did not like us. Did Asus improve the cooling on the G14, putting 125 watt 4090 on a laptop that struggled with 6800 S is insane? Um, I believe they did but I'm not sure exactly how they did. I need to do a little more research on that. Um, but we, need, we really need to wait to test it and see exactly how they've improved it and see how it performs, quite frankly. I doubt it pulls 125 watts all the time or even very often. It's interesting, Jared, the, uh, this, this laptop Scored higher in the 10 minute uh, Cinebench R23 test with the i9 13900HX than the G18 did. Which is surprising. And it was mainly because we could raise the power limit manually in Intel XTU above 140 watts, but still. All right. So we got 140 FPS on performance mode. Let's see if it increases any at all with fans on full speed. It might not. It likely won't. But we'll see.
Amon Smith with a $5 super chat. I'll read your question in a second when I get through this benchmark. Okay, so we ended up with five more FPS switching to full speed mode. So we probably had raised the power limits just a little bit potentially. Um, all right, so we're gonna change, take frame generation off and DLSS off. And let me check your question. Okay, so Emon says, can you confirm if the top of the laptop and bottom are metal, aluminum, or just the top? Both the bottom and the top are metal. Um, the bottom casing is metal too. It feels really premium and very stiff and rigid. Um, overall thoughts on the build quality? It's better built for sure, I think, than the G18. Like it feels more solid than the G18, so. All right, so we're gonna turn frame generation and DLSS off. Let's try it again. Is this laptop better than the G18? Uh, in some ways it's better and in other ways it's not as good, but it's very competitive, I think, with the G18, especially after seeing the display in person and sitting side by side with it. It's very similar display quality, more similar than I would have thought. Okay, all right, we're gonna go ahead and go forward in three, two, one. Overall, if I was picking between the M18 and the G18, I'd probably still go with the G18 because of the slightly better display. Um, but it also would depend on pricing and specs on the inside of the laptop. Okay, so our raw performance was 77 FPS. All right. Fantastic. Uh, let's go ahead and just swap frame generation and DLSS back to on. And let's go do a quest. And we'll see how it goes. I really like that I have the, uh, the volume controls just right here. To easily and quickly change the volume. Oh, we gotta go this way. I really like this tracker tool that like tells you where to go. It's like this golden light. It's pretty sweet. What about the room, Professor? I was thinking the same thing, Deke. Perhaps you could help. Let you guys hear the audio. Oh, uh, excuse, Deke. Ah, there you are. I trust your first classes yeah, these went temps, well? They these temps did, look great. Professor. I heard as much from Professors Hackett and Ronan. Seems Professor Fig taught you quite the a bit. The CPU temperature is pretty high, though. What was Call it, it 80 said? in the 80s, Some and I see rumors? 90s. I'd wager there's a good deal more to your travels here than what you've told me. Isn't there? Nothing more, Professor. I see. I'm trying to get a sonnet from a streeler. Regardless, you must continue to build upon what you've learned. In that regard, I've asked your professors to help hasten your progress with some extra assignments. Professor Ronan did mention something about that. In fact, Professor Ronan will meet you outside momentarily to assign your first one. Now, regarding the trip to Hogsmeade I mentioned earlier, we've arranged to replace the supplies lost on your way here including seeds, potion recipes, and spell crafts. Thank you, Professor. And Mr. Ollivander will connect you with the perfect wand. You've managed your classes well with a borrowed wand, but you'll find the magic you cast with your own wand to be far superior. I'm eager to get to Hogsmeade. Very well. I'd like you to make your first visit to the village with a classmate. Help you get your bearings. Perhaps Sebastian... I'd like to go with Natty. Excellent choice. Miss Oni, she'll keep you well clear of any of Victor Rookwood's undesirables en route. Rookwood? A rather unsavory Audio. Out of sync. Best to avoid no. him and his okay, associates, including his right hand. Okay. Let me know if the audio is better now.
Yeah, it's my uh, it's my cam link that I use for streaming. It gets out of sync sometimes. These speakers sound really good when I'm playing this game. There you are. They're like punchy and very immersive. You have a new spell to teach me, Professor. Indeed, I do, and an exceedingly useful one at that. But the fans are also very loud. Repero fixes things right up, makes a broken object good as new in the blink of an eye. It seems as if that might come in handy. More frequently than one would imagine. As Professor Weasley mentioned, I am not the only one who will be teaching you spells outside of class in an effort to catch you up with your peers. A number of your professors have agreed to do so as well, but first, each shall ask that you complete a few preliminary tasks to hone your magic. I have arranged some for today. See them through and then report back to me. We will have you casting Rapero in no time. I'll start on the task right away, Professor. Revelio. Okay, so we need to do... This is the... We need to go catch another page that's flying around in here. A flying page must be around here somewhere. So you say it's running hot for this wattage, but I would say... Uh, uh, I would say that the... Let me turn down the... Sorry, I'm gonna turn down the volume again so I can talk a little better to you guys. Um, the temps are running warm, but we're also under a dual load, so it's pretty expected. You know, it's pulling 80 watts of power to the CPU, so, eh, 95 watts to the CPU. It shows that this area is very CPU bound, for this area at least. I completed the assignments, Professor. Marvelous. You clearly know your way around basic charms. Let us give the old mending charm a try then, shall we? Remember to be deliberate in your enunciation and movements. I want to see some vigor. Now, wand at the ready. Yes, sir. Remember, your wand is a conduit of your magic. We're gonna learn this spell. Reparo! Woo! <laughs> okay. That's it. Very good. If you would like to practice bending something. <laughs> Allegedly symbolized heartbreak. Okay. Perhaps a jilted lover thought it too accurate and lashed out. So, there's our Hogwarts gameplay test, guys. Um, I'm really impressed overall with this laptop's performance, just in general. It's the CPU can get a little warm, maybe, but it's kind of expected under this heavy of a dual load. Um, I feel like we're getting a little less stutters than the G18 for some reason, um, which is good. We're going to go ahead and save this. Um, and let me go ahead and switch over to here. All right. So that's the live stream for today, everyone. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed it. We got a lot of comparison t done. We did display comparison between the Strix G18, size comparison. We now did Cinebench, Time Spy, and um, a display comparison. The, 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 the display is only 350 nits, which is not as bright as the G18. But this display is still better in person than I expected. I'm going to be honest. It took me by surprise. It's very colorful, and it's still bright enough to be a great display, I think. Um, but it's not as good as the G18, I don't think. Not quite as bright, uh, which will make, if you game in like a really bright living room or bright environments, you're gonna notice the difference, I think. A bit more than someone who's just in a dark gaming room all the time, then it's gonna be harder to tell even when they're side by side, they looked not that different. I'm gonna be honest, they didn't look that different. It was, it was pretty close, closer than I would've thought. Um, and then for CPU performance, this thing has fantastic temps uh, in Time Spy and Cinebench. I'm curious how the temps are going to be if we run them both at the same time. Um, and, but yeah, overall, 
I'm impressed with the M16 overall. I'm trying to think if there's any major hiccups. The, SS, the SD card reader was fast. The keyboard feels good. The backlighting on it is more premium than the G18. The build quality on this feels more premium than the G18. The ports on this are better than the G18. The SSDs are only, two of them are little short guys and two of them are longer guys. If you missed it, go back and check when I took the bottom of this chassis off. It was a surprising, you can't use four full-size SD card slots in this laptop. That was disappointing to me. Um, it limits how, how big of a uh, SSD you can put in here. What else? I'm trying to think if there's anything else, chat. Uh, like the video and come back for the full benchmarks overview of this machine. They'll be, I'll be testing at least 10 games for the benchmarks um, to see how it stacks up against some of the other laptops. I think that's everything I have to cover in this uh, overview, live stream, unboxing, quick initial basic benchmarking impressions. Oh, another thing I will say is a downside for the, the M16. Uh, let me show you this. So this touchpad, I wish it was taller. It's not as tall as I would ideally like. It is, you know, when you compare this, the G18 touchpad is probably more like that. It's about a, a, almost an inch taller probably on the G18, bigger. So vertical scrolling is a bit, a bit more narrow on, on this guy. Um, yeah, but I like the keyboard. I like the layout. I like the design. I like the build quality. The display is great. Uh, the performance was good. The performance was great when you do more testing, but it, good first impression. The software was also utter dog beep, beep, beep. It was terrible. Absolutely terrible. Alienware needs to work on the software. If you get this thing, know that you're going to have software and driver problems. Like I didn't get the full performance of the machine until I went to X, Intel XTU and upped the power limits. Like that's not good. That's really bad. So hopefully Alienware gets their stuff together. Um, and also I haven't done full Windows updating yet. So maybe that will fix that issue without, you know, but currently the only way I got it fixed was manually doing it, which is, that's not what you want as a laptop user. Um, yeah, the palm rest is smaller too, but at least everything was sm like comfortable to use in the palm rest. So that was good. Uh, like, like it, this whole thing, Never got that hot, you know, not got, never got uncomfortably hot to use. Like my Legion Pro 7 gets much warmer. Um, okay. Thanks so much for tuning in, everybody. I'll see you in the next one. Uh, probably live streaming tomorrow, but it's the weekend, so I might take a day off here. Maybe a shorter one tomorrow. We'll see. See you in the next one, everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone, for uh, supporting me. Uh, especially through the super chats and whoever uses my sheets on the links that also supports me. Thank you very much.